locker room. And they're ready to break the banner and hit the near sideline as the uh, officials approach the middle of the field now. We'll have the toss of the coin here momentarily. Our coin toss is brought to you by Georgia's own credit union, Banking on Purpose. We'll go down to Chuck Dowdle here in just a second as uh, he will mic the coin toss and we'll be able to listen in live as Auburn runs out of the uh, locker room. And the east end zone in Georgia hits the field from the west end zone to the roar of the crowd here at Sanford Stadium. Captain's waiting to approach the middle of the field. As soon as the players clear out of their way, there'll be a, a path to the logo at the 50-yard line where Chuck Dattle is standing by for a coin toss. And, uh, Chuck, we'll go ahead and toss it down to you, standing with John McDade, the referee, and getting ready to get this game cranked up. Georgia, they'll try to pile on a 6-3 and three Auburn team tonight to win their ninth of the season. They're seventh in the SEC and continue their winning ways towards the end of the regular season and into the SEC championship in a few weeks against Alabama, who, by the way, was a winner today over Mississippi State on the Comcast Business scoreboard. What was it, 24 to nothing? Uh, second straight shutout over an SEC team. I believe that was the first time I saw, the first time Alabama's done that since 1980. Was I, that what I saw? That's exactly what you saw. <laughs> oh, Pretty impressive goodness. stuff. Very impressive. Eric Zire and Scott Howard with you from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here in the Larry Munson Broadcast Suite at Sanford Stadium. And Better from Peach State Health Plan is our first half sponsor. Better is taking charge of my health as Georgia kicks it away with Rodrigo Blankenship from left to right. And it will bounce in the end zone and over the back line for a touchback. And Auburn will have the ball first and 10 at the 25. So that's how this game starts. Southwest Airlines sponsors Bulldogs football with low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. It's going to be interesting to see how the Dogs initially come out to defend Auburn. Auburn historically a powerful running team. This year, not so much. Just over 150 yards per game on the ground. But the right arm of Jared Stidham, that's the danger. Booby Whitlow in the backfield with Stidham, who's in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. They fake the power sweep and then throw it to the motion man, and that's Ryan Davis, and he's got a little space on this near side. Chased out of bounds at the 35-yard line by J.R. Reed, the safety. So Auburn on the first play, a little swing pass to the uh, left side for 10 yards and a first down. Dogs were man-to-man, and we lost him when he went in motion. Nobody was out there to get him. Ryan Davis with his 153rd catch of his career. He needs one more to become Auburn's all-time reception leader. He's likely to get that tonight. Here's Whitlow taking the handoff, tossing back to Stidham for a flea flicker. We chase Stidham out of the pocket. He throws on the run, and he finds Seth Williams in front of him up the near sideline for a, a reception and a gain into Georgia territory across the 50. We had chased Stidham uh, out of the pocket on that uh, flea flicker attempt, but he had a safety valve. And Seth Williams, who was at the about the 48-yard line, made the catch. The tackle made by Rochester and Crowder at the Georgia 47-yard line. A gain of 17. This time, nothing doing. They toss it to the right to Auburn to Whitlow. And Georgia gobbles him up behind the line of scrimmage. Back on Auburn's side of the 50, Tay Crowder, the junior linebacker, and DeAndre Walker clobbering Whitlow back at the Auburn 47-yard line. They lose six yards. A little option look for from Auburn there. Dogs, two men in perfect position. We missed the first tackle after the pitch from Stidham, but then a host of Bulldogs there to pull him down. A big play needed as Auburn was getting it going. Second and 16 now for the Tigers. Ball on their own 47. They shift out of the pistol. Stidham will throw it to Whitlow on the right side. Tyler Clark will lead him up behind the line of scrimmage. A second consecutive tackle for loss. This time back at the Auburn 43-yard line. Clark read it all the way on the far side of the field, and and uh, made the tackle on Whitlow near the uh, Auburn sideline at the 43. That's a loss of three more. He's got four new starters on his Auburn offensive line. They have struggled this year. Dogs doing a good job hitting some gaps, hitting some creases here, getting in the backfield. Dogs right now on a two-cloud look. 
Got a bunch of guys back in this third and forever. Six on the line of scrimmage for Georgia. Stidham in the shotgun. We rush three and we drop three from that line. Stidham with time in the pocket. Steps up and runs. Escapes a tackle at the 45, at the 50, and tackled up high around the shoulders and out on the numbers on the far side. Hit by Jawan Taylor and Tyson Campbell, the cornerback, and well short of the first down. Stidham forced out of the pocket, tried to scam, scramble for what he could find, and what he found was seven yards up to the 50-yard line. It'll be fourth and long, and Auburn will send out the punt unit. What's great there for the dogs, we were able to get pressure, only rushing three guys. We dropped eight. Here's Aaron Sipos to punt it away. Terry Godwin to take a fair catch at the 11 and a half, maybe the 12-yard line. He makes the catch between the hash and the numbers on the far edge of the field. And Georgia will get its first possession on offense in this ballgame. It was a 38-yard punt by Sipos as Auburn punts it away on their first possession. We're just a few minutes into the ballgame, 12-10 on the clock, first quarter. We're scoreless. Georgia getting its first touch of the football. And we'll take some time to tell you the Champions for Charity game is on. Every time Georgia wins, Camp Twin Lakes, the Salvation Army, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Dogs first and 10 on their own 12-yard line. Moving to our right, handoff, Holyfield, Holyfield powering his way at left tackle and still moving the pile across the 20 with his head down behind his pads, driving up to about the 23-yard line. Strength of this Auburn defense is supposed to be its front seven, but we ran right into the teeth of it behind Andrew Thomas and Solomon Kinley. Kate Mays then peeled around and gave it the final little push to get the first down. I think it was a pull by Cade Mays. <laughs> That's a scan of energy first down up to the 23 yard yard line gain of 11 first and 10 Georgia at the 23 Holyfield offset to Fromm's right going to get the ball again changes directions behind the line of scrimmage breaks to the outside up the hash to the 30 yard line Daniel Thomas the strong safety a junior from Montgomery Alabama makes the stop for the Auburn defense but it's seven more yards for Holyfield and the dogs as he comes to the sideline DeAndre Swift will check into the ball game for the first time Georgia second and three on the 30. Boy really good block there by Terry uh, Godwin as we got outside the block by Godwin is what gave us the, the ever so small crease to get upfield. How many times have we seen and heard that? Here's Swift running straight ahead between the tackles tries to veer to the right a little bit He'll be near the first down across the 33, I think, when they put the ball down. He got the first down. He got the three yards necessary. Montavious Atkinson, the linebacker from Fairburn, Georgia, makes the tackle for uh, the Tigers. But it's a Scana Energy first down at the Georgia 33. We're scoreless. First five minutes of the opening quarter here in Athens tonight. Jam-packed Sanford Stadium, 93,000 or so. And temperatures in the mid-40s right now. Here's Fromm with a play fake, going to throw from the pocket. He's got a man open, and that is Godwin, I believe. Yes, from the left side, coming in and making the catch the middle of the field at the 50 and into Auburn territory. Tackled down at the Tiger 42 by Daniel Thomas. And that's another Scana Energy first down. So Godwin Z blocks, and he makes nice catches. Yeah, no doubt from the inside slot position, just a deep in route there, but it was the block by DeAndre Swift that was really key there. Auburn brought pressure at after the play action, Swift came up and just leveled an Auburn oncoming linebacker. 11th catch of the year for Godwin, 25-yard gain, first and 10 from the Tiger 42-yard line. Nauta switches sides, goes from right to left. We hand it off to Swift. He runs where Nauta had shifted to and where the blocking is, and he angles left for uh, about four yards to the Tiger 39. Jeremiah Denson, the free safety, on the stop for Auburn. Another great first down pick up there. We can play all day if we're second and medium or second and short and running right behind the big body of Andrew Thomas there and Solly Kenley opening up some very nice holes to run through. Ball is between the hash marks, but near the far hash. Dogs moving right. Everybody in tight on the left and right edges. Lone setback is Holyfield. He's going to get the carry with all the blocking. Elijah bounces out. He's got running room to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, and he's going to step out of bounds before the 15 at the 17-yard line, even though the run continued. He was pushed out of bounds by Igbenogany, the cornerback from Trustville, Alabama, as Holyfield picks up another Scana Energy first down 
to the 17-yard line, and that's a 21-yard pickup. The left side of our offensive line is dominating this football game. That was just a zone run, so Holyfield can kind of get up to the line of scrimmage and pick his hole, and it was a no-brainer. We collapsed the right side of the Auburn defensive line. Nobody was there to contain at all. Dogs get into the Massey-Ferguson red zone for the first time. Play fake from sets up with time, throws it for the back corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Two flags, maybe three come out. And that's going to be either holding or pass interference on Jamel Dean, the cornerback for Auburn, in the end zone. We were trying to go to Riley Ridley. He loses shoe. I think he did, yeah. <laughs> He's got a sock foot on and a shoe on and a shoe in his hand as he comes to the sideline. That play took a long time to develop, but there was no doubt about that. Ridley had guys all over him. John McDade, the referee, you may have been able to barely hear his call under what we were saying, but uh, pass interference is the call on Auburn, so that's going to give the dogs the ball on the two-yard line. Ball's on the far hash. Georgia first and goal from the Auburn 2, 8.33 on the clock. First quarter, we are scoreless, but the dogs with a serious threat going on right here. And get ready for this stadium to erupt if we punch it in after some of the struggles we've had in this area the past two games. We've got two receivers out wide to the right. That's the wide side of the field. Holyfield's in the backfield. Going to get it from Fromm, moving to the left, laterally dancing, and Auburn eats him up. Auburn with Big Brown and Deshaun Davis, one of the best tacklers in the SEC, make the stop on Holyfield, and it was a loss on the play. Back to the five, a loss of three. And that was a check at the line of scrimmage there by Fromm, but just too big of a push for the first time tonight. The Auburn defensive line won that battle and got into the, the backfield. Fromm comes out, Z, and Justin Fields comes in the ball game. Auburn very good in red zone defense. They've only yielded five touchdowns in red zone opportunities for the opposition this season. Fields back in the shotgun. Going to take it, curl around, 360 back the other way. He's got Auburn men pursuing him. He's going to be dropped for a loss back at the eight. Deshaun Davis, a linebacker, came in on a blitz. The senior from Pritchard, Alabama, makes the tackle on Fields, and we've gone backwards from the two-yard line, and we're back on about the eight or nine now. That was a design pass. We just faked the quarterback sweep, and then was, we were rolling fields out to his right, and, and we had receivers downfield, but pressure too quick there. Fields couldn't do anything except hop around and try to find some room to get back to the line of scrimmage. Gilliard up over the ball. Three receivers to the left for Georgia. One to the right. Swift is in the backfield. Fromm is in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Pressure from the edges. Throws to the corner. Oh, he had not an open over through him in the right corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Boy, a great drive right there. Just stalls. Once again, we get down to within the shadow of the goal line and just move backwards. Coach Smart can't be happy about that, but the drive itself was fantastic. And you're right on that last play. We had Nod on a corner route, a little bit of air underneath it. He may have been able to track that one down. So we'll try a field goal with Rodrigo Blankenship, semifinalist for the Groza Kicking Award in college football. From the 15 is where Jake Camarda, the holder, will spot the football. A 25-yard try right in front of the posts. No angle on the play. The kick to the right is up and good. That's another All-State good hands field goal for the Bulldogs. GeorgiaA.com. Good-looking drive, Z, that stalled inside the five, but that's not surprising against a very good red zone Auburn defense. That's the 28th trip into the red zone defended by Auburn and the 19th field goal that they have forced. Yeah, obviously disappointing that we don't punch it in there. You're right. Listen, this Auburn front seven is very, very good. And going up and down the field, though, we manhandled them, which you have to feel good about. Obviously would have liked to, to have seven out of that, but nonetheless, a very good start for the dogs. Igbenogany and Whitlow are the deep receivers for Georgia on this kickoff by Blankenship from left to right. Rodrigo puts his foot into it, bangs it deep over the back line of the end zone for yet another touchback. And here comes the Auburn offense again. They'll have it at their own 25-yard line. And right now, one in four car batteries is about to fail. You can think ahead and have yours tested for free at your local Advance Auto Parts. If you purchase a new battery, they'll install it at no cost. Check your battery now because Georgia fans don't stall out on game day. Think ahead. Think advance at Advance Auto Parts and participating CarQuest locations. See store for details. Tigers on the 25. Second possession 
of the ball game for Auburn. Stidham in the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Whitlow with blockers on the far side. Changes directions. Gets by the Georgia defense across the 30 up to the 35. First down Auburn and more to the 40, make it the 39-yard line. Richard LeCount, the safety, had to make the stop on the far sideline in the secondary. We had a lot of red shirts over on that side of the field, Z, but Whitlow found a little crease. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good job there by, I think it was Tay Crowder, getting outside and, and forcing him back into the middle, but we were just lacking in pursuit of hair late. 14 yards and a first down. Stidham fires far sideline, caught by Shedrick Jackson, a freshman receiver from Hoover, Alabama. Hit pretty hard into the Auburn sideline by uh, Tyson Campbell for the Dogs' defense. The gain is up close to the 49-yard line. It was about nine and a half yards at second and inches now. And now a flag coming from the Georgia sideline on a sideline warning from the official from the headlinesman. Dogs coming out right now. Sideline warning on the Georgia bench. The first and only warning of the game. Second down. So the next time it'll be a penalty on the dogs. Dogs right now, a lot of single safety looks. A little bit surprising with the way I think we can get in and get pressure just rushing four. But a lot of single safety looks. Trying to really stay locked in and focused in on this Auburn running game. Shotgun snap to Stidham. Here comes pressure. Stidham steps up and runs to the right. Slides at the 50. We smother him with Tay Crowder. Stidham started his slide right about the 50. He got the first down in a, a yard, maybe two. We'll see where they spot it just on the other side of the 50. So the gain mostly a yard, but it's first down for the Bulldog or for the uh, Auburn Tigers, rather, after the scramble by their quarterback. First and 10, ball just into Georgia territory. Auburn moving to our left. They're all in white. Whitlow takes the handoff, plows it right tackle, falls forward to the Georgia 46-yard line. They pick up a four. It'll be second and six now for the Tigers. This is an inside trap play right there. Julian Rochester in. DeAndre Walker in on that tackle. Dogs showed cover two, but sprinted a safety up right at the snap of the football, dropping that extra guy in the box. Auburn with a no huddle, two receivers to each side. They work on the far hash, moving left. Shotgun snap to Stidham, dumps it over the line of scrimmage to Ryan Davis on a short little slant route. He made the catch at the 40, tried to change directions on the hash, but Richard LeCount stays with him, makes the tackle, but it's another gain for the Auburn offense to the 37-yard line, a pickup of nine. Yeah, that's a good read there by Stidham. Dogs brought linebacker pressure. That was Stidham's hot route. Another first down, quick throw out to the right to Davis with a blocker and will sling him down. That may be a horse collar. Here come the flags now. Out of bounds on the far sideline. That's going to be 15 yards against the dogs. DeAndre Baker may have just got flagged for a horse collar. We'll get the call from John McDade, the referee. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Pulling a player down to the ground after he's been out of bounds. Number 18, defense. Hell, he's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. And Auburn coming right back after the Georgia. Penalty went. enforcement is a 30, so the full 15 yards will be enforced. So uh, John McDade, the referee, correcting himself, not half the distance. It's at the 16-yard line, but it's first and 10 there as Jarrett Stidham with a hot start, 6-for-6, six six, throwing the football here in the first quarter. It's Georgia 3, Auburn nothing, but the Tigers now threatening. They're in the uh, red zone. Shotgun snap to Stidham. He'll sling it out to the left side to Davis. Davis catches it in the left flat. Down the field he goes to the 10, maybe the 9. DeAndre Baker makes the tackle inside the Georgia 10. And Auburn right now seeing the dogs manned up on the outside. They're going to take that all day long. It's a, they're just standing up, Stidham standing up, throwing a quick little bubble screen to the outside, trying to get their athletes in space. Good block by Darius Slayton for the Tigers to help out a little bit. They go Wildcat with Whitlow. Snap it to him. He wants to throw it. He throws it in the end zone. He's got a man there. It's caught. Touchdown. That is uh, John Samuel Schenker. One of their, uh, their reserve tight ends who broke open in the back of the end zone. And it was Whitlow that threw the touchdown pass out of the Wildcat. And Auburn has the lead 6-3. to three. Yeah, well-designed play there. Whitlow running to his left. Not a quarterback. Able to get his shoulders turned. And put that ball exactly where he needed to put it. The point after try will be attempted by Anders Carlson. Kicking to the left. Tigers quieted the crowd a little bit with that drive. The kick is up and good. 
And Auburn has a 7-3 lead on the Bulldogs here in the first quarter with 428 remaining in the period. Timeout in Athens. Back to Sanford Stadium after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Hi, son. You're on speaker. Just got back from the pass to Sal Canella against Texas A&M. Davis, a receiver. And then tonight, Whitlow, the running back, throwing a touchdown pass to the backup tight end as Auburn takes the lead. They are set to kick it off. To our left, the deep receiver is Mecole Hardman. Carlson's kick from the near hash to the left, high end over end, sailing away from Hardman as he walks away, watches the ball land in the end zone. And John McDade blowing the play dead for the touchback, and then a couple of players mixing it up about the 25-yard line, and McDade did a full sprint to get to those to break it up. But everything apparently is okay there. Dogs ball, first and 10 on the 25 on the touchback. Let's check in with Chuck Donald, Cook's Pest Control sideline report, Chuck. Yeah, I think it bears noting at this point, Scott, Auburn has had seven points in the first quarter against the Dogs on their last three trips into Athens and never scored again. Well, they've had some success, yeah, in that first quarter. Let's hope it stays like that tonight. Here's Swift, hit by one of his blockers, spinning away in the backfield and trying to find some positive yardage. Cade Mays and uh, big Derek Brown were tangled up in a battle, and Swift kind of ran into that grouping. And then Big Cat Bryant made the tackle for the Tigers at the 26-yard line. It's a gain of only one, second down and nine for Georgia. Yeah, Auburn very aggressive with their deep safeties, getting both within about 10 to 12 yards. And then with their strong safety, really getting him up into the box. Hardman comes in motion to the near side. We hand it to Swift going the other direction, trying to step over bodies and find some running space. Not a lot of it there. At the 27-yard line, Darrell Williams, an outside linebacker from Hoover, Alabama, on the tackle for the Tigers. So two plays and two yards gained for the Dogs. It's third and eight from our 27. And this is where it gets tough against this Auburn defense. Third and long situations. They, they tend to bring a lot of different blitzes and different looks, trying to get the football out of your hand on the side adjust. Bunch group of receivers on the near side at three. One of them goes in motion. That's Hardman to the left. Fromm's in the shotgun. Swift in the backfield with him. Jake drops back, sets up, throws. Open in the left flat is Swift at the 28 to the 35 to the 40. He Billy sends it up to the 50-yard line. He high-stepped it up to the 50 and into Auburn territory at the 48. Knocked out of bounds by Noah Igbenogany there. He high-stepped it, then he lowered his head like a battering ram. Great read there by Jake Fromm. Coverage everywhere. A good job in protection, too, as Auburn brought a couple of linebackers. And we were able to stonewall the oncoming rush, giving Jake Fromm time to survey the field, get to his check down. DeAndre Swift in a ton of green grass. 25 yards and a first down to the Auburn 48. Here comes pressure. We go with a screen pass to Swift on the left side. He stiff arms for more room and tiptoes out of bounds into the Auburn sideline at the 44-yard line. It was a four-yard gain. Auburn had a lot of white shirts in the vicinity. Swift able to pick his way for four yards behind a little bit of blocking. It'll be second down and six from the Tiger 44. Boy, good recognition there by Auburn. It was just the speed of DeAndre Swift once he caught it to accelerate away from a couple of Auburn defensive linemen, but they sniffed it out pretty well. The freshman Justin Fields back in at quarterback out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Here comes uh, Simmons on a speed sweep to the right. Tyler Simmons with the ball, trying to find some room. And at the corner, runs out of space into the Georgia sideline at the 43. Pushed out of bounds by the cornerback, Jamel Dean, a junior from Cocoa, Florida, for Auburn. And the uh, gain was minimal, only a yard to the 43. So it'll be third down now for the Dogs. Third and five on the Auburn 43-yard line. Georgia trailing here in the first quarter, 7-3. to three. Dogs one out of two here in the early going. Jake Fry back in the football game for us. And Elijah Holyfield in the backfield with it. Two receivers left, two to the right. Gilliard over the ball. Godwin goes in motion across the formation left. Snap by Lamont. Fromm sets up in the pocket, throws over the middle. Caught by uh, Terry Godwin at the 35. Gets to the sideline and pushed out of bounds. He got the first down and more. Down at the 22, pushed out of bounds by the strong safety, Daryl Thomas. Another dig route there. The middle's clearing because Auburn is bringing linebacker pressure. Great read there by Jake Fromm. 
hitting Terry Godwin in stride, which allows for the ever-important yards after catch. 20 yards and a first down. How big is Georgia on third down lately? Unbelievable. My goodness. First and 10 at the Auburn 22 on the near hash. Hand off to Holyfield. He stutter steps and then just drives straight into the line and runs into the arms of Dontavious Russell, a big 320-pound lineman at the 20-yard line and falls across the 20 inside of that a few inches. Uh, the gain is only a couple. And it's second and eight for the dogs. Well, those are some big bodies inside for Auburn that we're trying to move. Two guys, 320 pounds. Our line has its work cut out for them tonight. Three receivers to the left for Georgia, one to the right. Man in motion is Hardman. Play fake Holyfield will throw it to Hardman out in the right flat. Oh, Miko made a man miss. Boy, did he ever. And then tiptoes down the sidelines and picks up a few more yards down to the 11 as he made Montavious Atkinson miss. And then Daryl Thomas forced him out of bounds at the 11-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. The rolling on the field is a fumble forward that went out of bounds. By rule, the ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. Third down. They spot the ball back on the 13-yard line, so a gain of seven for Georgia. And it will be third down, as the referee, John McDade, just announced. And that may be the end of the, the, end of the quarter, I believe it is. That Final is the the seconds tick down in quarter number one. But again, Georgia driving. Dogs will have the ball to start the second quarter at the Auburn 13-yard line. A third down play coming up for Georgia. Our score after 15 minutes of play, it's Auburn 7, Georgia 3 on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Georgia Power is teaming up with UGA's Athletic Association for the annual Team UGA Award, an award honoring those in Bulldog. Auburn 13-yard line when play resumes. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Justin Fields checks in to the ball game to start the second quarter on third and short. Dogs will be moving to our left now towards the west end zone. Ball is on the far hash. At the 13 of the Tigers. Auburn's in cover zero here. All 11 men, five yards from the football. Ridley out to the right. Three receiver, two receivers to the left. Snap it to Fields. He's going to run around the right edge, get the first down, and lean in to the 10-yard line. Took a pretty good hit on the far corner, but he went right around Isaiah Wilson and got the first down. A three-yard gain as Fields comes to the sideline now and Fromm back in the ball game. And I believe it's going to be goal to go from the 10. First down for the Dogs right on the Auburn 10-yard line. And look for us to throw next time Justin Fields in that position. The play position. clock operator, please set the play clock to 25 seconds for the offensive player's helmet coming off. And start the play clock on my winner. My look for us to throw next time we get in a third and short situation like that in the field. Auburn covers zero across the board. They don't believe we're going to throw the football with Justin when he comes into the football game. Obviously didn't do it there, but if we keep getting that look, we need to go over the top. Thomas, the strong safety, made the tackle for Auburn as the dogs work in the Massey-Ferguson red zone at the 10. Handoff Holyfield looking for running room, bouncing out left. It's a sprint to the corner, and Auburn going to tackle up uh, Holyfield, wrap him up around the legs. Right on the 10, he falls forward to the 9. That's Jamel Dean. That was speed on speed running this way. And the gain is only a yard to the 9. Second down and goal from there. Good job there by Dean from Auburn. Holyfield, it looked like when he ducked inside initially and then popped it out that he was going to get the corner. But good speed and pursuit by Dean to corral him. So now the ball on the near hash for Georgia. Trailing 7-3, to three, early seconds of the second quarter. Two receivers to the right for Fromm in the shotgun. Takes the snap, immediately throws that way and tries to go over the top of uh, Holloman. But the defender, Igbenogany, had his back to the line of scrimmage and the ball... I think it may have deflected off his body. I don't think he got his hands on it because he never turned around and looked at the play coming in, but it's an incomplete pass in that far right corner. Yeah, that ball underthrown there by Fromm. I think he was trying to go back shoulder and never got it to the back shoulder where he, that ball placement was. That one's got to go high. Yeah, yeah, with Holloman back there, you need to let him go up and get it. Absolutely, with those big hands and just yank it down. Igbenogany at 5'11", and uh, Holloman at 6'2", or better. With long arms and good hands. Fromm to throw. Here comes pressure. Forced out of the pocket. They're grabbing at him. They're going to sack him back on the 20-yard line. Oh, flags down. They may have got face masks. They may have hit him in the head. They may be targeting. 
Auburn's defense went Personal crazy foul. on Jake Fromm. Targeting. Using the crown of the helmet to punish the player. Number one, defense. This play is now under video review. Big Cat Bryant, Z, whistled for the uh, targeting call. Sophomore from Cordial, Georgia. And, Scott, I think he knew it. He looked up after he hit Fromm. He looked up and then just dropped his head into the turf. I don't think so. We'll see if we can get a look at a replay as the uh, play is under review because it is targeting. Oh, wow. Yeah, it came in straight with the crown of the helmet right into the Jake's face mask as we look at the replay that's brought to you by Barbasol, offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with code FOOTBALL at Barbasol.com. Game on. Yeah, this one should be a super quick replay as well, just like we had last week. Gus Malzahn is pitching a fit on the sideline saying that Jake Fromm was going down. There was nothing that Bryant could do, but no doubt he led with the top of his helmet. <laughs> he knows that. that doesn't have anything to do with it, though, right? After video review, the ruling on the field of targeting has been confirmed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, Gus. <laughs> Number one is disqualified for the remainder of the game. That was, I mean, that... It, it, That's it the rule. Clear. That was the epitome of the rule right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely right. That's the perfect call. So the dogs will have it uh, first and goal at the five-yard line. And better from Peach State Health Plan sponsors Georgia football. Better is taking charge of my health. For more information, visit uh, betterisga.com. So the ball actually inside uh, the Auburn five by just a hair on the near hash. Big Cat Bryant has been ejected, uh, well, disqualified from the game for targeting. And the dogs four yards and uh, a few inches away from taking the lead. Justin Fields enters the ball game. He's at quarterback. Swift behind him and off to his left. Three receivers to the right. Fields hands it to Swift. DeAndre bursts straight down the hash down to the one-yard line where he's tackled by the linebacker Deshaun Davis, the senior from Pritchard, Alabama. So it'll be second and goal from right around the one. Let's see where they spotted the football. Might be just outside the one-yard line. I can't see where they have put it down. Fields will stay in the ball game. We'll put Swift out in the slot to the right. Nauta's out on that right side. They'll go empty set. Three to the right, two to the left for the Dogs. On second and goal from the one, they shift Nauta from right to left. Snap to Fields. He spins and flags all over the place. I think Fields leaned in and started movement early before the snap of the football. Prior to the snap, ball starts. 79, offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. They called it on Isaiah Wilson, but uh, Justin was already leaning in towards the line of scrimmage before the snap of the football. You could have called him for an, uh, a false start, but they called it on Wilson instead, and now the ball back on the six. Boy, and just the penetration there, far too much. The struggles when we get down to the one and two yard line, you just have to scratch your head. We're doing all kinds of different things to the same end. So, again, the ball on the near hash. Georgia moving left. Two receivers out wide to the right. Field stays in the game at quarterback. Swift is in the backfield. Second down for the Dogs. They hand it to Swift. Again, penetration for Auburn, but Swift able to run away from the first wave of it. Curl back to the left and get back inside the five to about the three-yard line. Tackled by Darius Thomas as Auburn's defense in the red zone just swarms all over the place. Boy, do they ever. Going to be third and goal Z from the three. Yeah, and there it was just the athleticism of DeAndre Swift, the penetration from Auburn in the red zone, and what we've seen on every snap down here, they are just winning the battle. Fromm back in at quarterback. Three receivers bunched tight to the right, one to the left. Fromm wants to throw, looking, looking in the pocket, forced up to the five, four, three, hit by there. We can't, we're trying to push. We're trying to push the pile. Keep going. The pile is moving towards the goal line. Now it's going to be whistled dead around the one or so, and then some tempers flare up after that. Auburn stopped Fromm around the two or so, and then all of a sudden our big lineman got behind him, started driving that pile. I'm not sure where they're going to put the ball down. They're putting it where? On the two and a half, maybe. Russell and Brown 
Those two big beefy linemen for Auburn jammed it up with Fromm. He tried to scramble in there, couldn't find anything open in the end zone, tried to run it in, but Auburn has jammed us up again. The ball's on the two and a half. It's going to be another short field goal try for Rodrigo Blankenship. Well, dogs try to run a little pick play in a three-route combination to the right side. Very well covered. Nothing that Jake could do except pull it down and try to make something happen on the ground. 20-yard try. There's the snap, the hold by Camarda, the kick. Good into the net for Rodrigo Blankenship. Another All-State good hands field goal for the Dogs. Auburn still leads. It's the Tigers 7, Georgia 6. Second quarter, back in a moment. Go Blankenship to make it 7-6. to six. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. Back here in the Piedmont Healthcare radio booth at Sanford Stadium. Let's pause. 10 seconds. Station identification on the Bulldogs Sports Network. First half of our broadcast pre- uh, presented by M. Better from Peach State Health Plan tonight. Better is taking charge of my health. For more information, visit betterisga.com. And here's Blankenship to kick it away. Sean Shivers is uh, one of the deep men now for Auburn. Blankenship kicking from right to left towards the west end zone here at Sanford Stadium. He booms another one, and that one will sail deep and hit uh, near the back line of the end zone and bounce into the hedges behind the end zone there. Another touchback for Blankenship of my health. Visit uh, betterisga.com for more information. And Sirius XM is zero to everything in 150 channels. And has comedy, news, entertainment, including Georgia Bulldogs football. So tune in to Sirius XM. First and 10 at the 25, Auburn. Stidham will drop back to throw. Fires for his target, Slayton, at the 40 on the near sideline. Broken up by DeAndre Baker. And the pass is incomplete on the 15-yard attempt. It'll love, be second down and 10. Love the adjustment there by the dogs. We go cover two and get up and press receivers outside. Jared Stidham was perfect in the first quarter, primarily because we were playing man-to-man everywhere off on the outside, and they just were eating us up with little bubble screens. Four-man rush. Auburn will run it, and they will run right into big Devontae Wyatt. A sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, 300-pounder, held his ground, made the stop right on the hash at the 27-yard line, a gain of two. And it's third down and long for Auburn, third and eight for the Tigers on their own 27. I really think our front four can beat the offensive line from Auburn. We don't need to bring a lot of pressure today with different looks, but going cover two and getting press on the outside, really a smart move. Rochester and Ledbetter with their hands in the turf as they rush four. Stidham drops back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, rolls to the right, throws on the run, and caught and drilled in the back, out of bounds on the near sideline at the 47-yard line. Anthony Schwartz, a freshman from Pembroke Pines, Florida, made a nice catch right on the sideline. Stidham, very good at throwing on the run, got that completion and a first down up to the 47, a gain of 20. Yeah, Schwartz was on a crossing pattern, kind of geared it down, and then on the scramble by Stidham, just found the soft spot in the zone. Really good scramble rules execution there by Auburn. Stidham knows what he's doing. He's got receivers, two of them, stacked to each side. Will throw quickly out to the left to Schwartz. He makes the catch with a block, breaks a tackle, stumbles into Georgia territory, and down at the 46 and a half, J.R. Reed on the stop for the Bulldog defense. Boy, Schwartz is quick now. He gets that ball on the outside. He's taken off. We had a Bulldog. It was Reed that was coming in on the inside. Had to take an inside angle to get him. No way he's going to catch him. Just fortunate enough to get a hand on him. That was a seven-yard gain. Second down. Stidham forced out of the pocket. Throws it deep down the field. And flags come flying out everywhere. Tyson Campbell was man-to-man with Slayton. And then we had help over the top from the safety, Richard LeCount. And that's going to be interference, I believe, on Georgia. Down around the 15-yard line. Boy, if Tyson Campbell just turns around, he's got a pick there. Just ran up the back of the receiver, never turned around, and got his head on the ball. Ball looked like it hit him in the shoulder pads. So the penalty on Georgia will put the ball on the dog's 31-yard line. It'll be first down there for Auburn. They lead 7-6. to 9.40 to go here in the second quarter. Sold out Sanford Stadium on this Saturday night. 
Michael Barnett will come in for Malik Herring. Walter Grant will come in at one of the outside backer spots. Wyatt stays in as one of our linemen. Robert Beal on as a linebacker. And now Georgia will call for a timeout. Dogs ask for time and get it. There's a couple of flags in the Georgia secondary. But I guess we've been awarded a timeout. Make the right call. Cook's Pest Control. Looky, looky, looky. Here comes Cookie. Cook's Pest Control. Dog fans, metal roofing just got smarter. Along with our traditional lines of metal roofing, we offer metal shingles and shake, slate, and terracotta tile. We also offer pre-engineered buildings, steel pole barn packages, and a full line of agricultural products. Go to georgiametals.com. Go dogs! Get a metal roof, roof, roof. Coach Kirby Smart here. Today's broadcast is live from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio Booth. Today's first half broadcast presented by Ambetter from Peach State Health Plan. Better is taking charge of my health. So the dogs were penalized five yards for an illegal substitution on defense. They were not charged with the timeout because, as John McDade said, we are already in a TV timeout. But four penalties and 40 yards for Georgia, two penalties for 20 yards in the last two plays for the Bulldogs and Auburn in business down on the Georgia 26 with a first and five coming up. Jared Stidham hurting us right now with his scramble ability, able to get outside the pocket, find some loose spots in the zone. I do like the move that we've made. Next adjustment, if we can get a good outside rush, but contain Jared Stidham and then get a push inside, should take care of the scramble issues we've had. Six defensive backs in for Georgia as Stidham will throw it to the left, a screen to that side of the field. It's caught by Ryan Davis, and he sneaks inside the 20 and is tackled by Jonathan Ledbetter around the 17-yard line. Jawan Taylor, the linebacker, in on the stop as well, but it's a first down for the Tigers. They move the sticks, first and 10 at the Georgia 16. They give it to Whitlow. He runs it left tackle. He had a little bit of daylight, and the dogs closed it in a hurry with Jawan Taylor, the linebacker, making the hit on Booby Whitlow, who has a touchdown pass tonight at the 13-yard line. A gain of about three. It'll be second down seven for the Tigers. They threaten to add to a one-point lead here. Whitlow, six foot, 216 pounds. When he gets going downhill, he's a load to tackle. Stidham in the shotgun, takes the snap. Farhash looks into the end zone or in that direction, throws it to Slayton, who makes a reaching grab, falling to the turf around the six-yard line. He falls forward to the five. Baker was in coverage for the Dogs. It's going to be goal to go for the Tigers. Yeah, just a quick in route there. Good job by Stidham getting the football out of his hands. Eight-yard gain. Tigers go quick. Whitlow, play fake. Stidham going to keep it. Runs to the sideline. We bear hug him with Richard LeCount. Chunk him out of bounds near Uga's doghouse on the far side of the field. He got one yard on the quarterback keeper. He faked to Whitlow, who had running room. Probably would have been the better play to give it to him, as it turned out. But Stidham took it to the far sideline, got a yard. Yeah, no question about that. We'll see if the dogs here can return the favor. Wholesale changes. Look at this substitution. Goodness gracious. We just ran six or seven guys onto the field. Oh, my goodness. Auburn going to that muddle huddle. They break it quickly. Overload the left side of the line of scrimmage. Fake the toss to Stidham. Looks for the back corner of the end zone. Overthrew everybody. He threw it into the photographers near the hedge. Trying to go to Schenker again, who caught the touchdown pass from Whitlow in the first quarter. They overloaded. They had about six or seven guys to the left of the center on that play. Overloaded the left side. Faked the toss to that side. Stidham threw it out of bounds over the back line of the end zone. Well scouted and well played there by the dogs. Coming out, they, they knew what they were going to get, and we were in very good position. Stidham actually had a shot to get into one of his guys, but would have had to make the perfect throw. Third goal, Tigers from the Georgia four. Stidham in the shotgun. Whitlow offset to his left. Three receivers right, one to the left for the Tigers. They move to the right towards the east end zone. Stidham takes the snap from the 11. Hard throw into the end zone. Broken up, incomplete, near the goal post. Middle of the uh, back edge of the end zone, Seth Williams was the target, and it was Eric Stokes in coverage that helped break up the ball. I couldn't tell if that hit him in the hands or Stokes stripped it away, but it was an incomplete pass nonetheless, and Auburn will be forced to try a field goal. Just a slant from the outside, and great job by Stokes getting his his arms around the receiver's arms and yanking them down. Stokes, the redshirt freshman. 
from Covington, Georgia. Good to hear from him again. He had a big play in Missouri, scored a touchdown on a block punt. Here's Carlson for a field goal try, and now flags are down before the snap of the football. False start. 66. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, they're going to back up after a, a false start on Bailey Sharp on their uh, field goal unit. So they'll put the ball back at the nine-yard line. The field goal try will be five yards farther back now from the 17. 27-yard try from the far hash, kicking to the right. Carlson, 11 of 21 field goal tries this season. Most of those misses from 50 yards plus. He's pretty good inside of 40 yards, and the kick is up, and the kick is good here. And Auburn adds to its lead. 10 to 6 now. That's another All-State good hands field goal in this ballgame. Auburn by 4, 10 to 6 over the dogs. Second quarter, 746 remaining in the half. The radio booth in the Munson Suite here at Sanford Stadium. Tonight's first half broadcast presented by M. Better from Peach State Health Plan. Better is taking charge of my health and dog fans. Whether your favorite seat is right on the 50 or comes with a bird's eye view, head to StubHub and grab 100% verified tickets so you know you'll get in. StubHub, getting fans into the game for over 17 years, the official fan-to-fan ticket marketplace of the Georgia Bulldogs. StubHub, be there. Carlson will kick it up, or tee it up, rather, on the 35 and kick it from left to right. As we continue here in the second quarter, 7.46 remaining in this first half. Kick high, end over end, might be returnable. Hardman on the goal line, going to run it between the hashes at the 10. 15, veers to the outside, breaks a tackle, 20, 25, cuts back the other way, hit and breaks another tackle at the 33, up the sideline, across the 40, to about the 41, 42-yard line. Nifty return by Mecole Hardman, broke a tackle from Smoke Monday and just kept going, and then Anthony Schwartz had to get him to the turf, the wide receiver. Boy, great effort there by Miko. You're right. The the missed tackle led to about 20 more yards there for the Dogs. And great starting field position. See if we can get this thing into the end zone this go around. Great success the Dogs have had in between the 20s. Really, in between the fives. As once we get down inside the five-yard line where we've stalled. 41-yard return by Hardman, his longest of the year. Handoff from the 41 to Holyfield. Running to the left, outside the tackle, bounces way out, tries to get to the edge, angles to the 45 and beyond to the 47. Hit by Darrell Williams, the linebacker, to the turf there as the tackle is made at the 47. A gain of six. It'll be second and four for the Dogs. Great block there by Solomon Kenley. Able to hook one of the Auburn oncoming defenders. And then Holyfield getting outside and then able to stick his foot in the ground and find a little bit of a crease. Second down four, 704 remaining second quarter. Dogs trail 10 to 6. Four down linemen for Auburn. Bring a man in motion, slide him into the left, hand it off straight ahead, running Holyfield. He winds his way close to the 50, piling on top of his lineman, running in there right behind Baker and Gilliard. Straight ahead, Kenley got uh, to the 50. He got three yards. It'll be third and a yard. Auburn continuing now to go single safety, getting that additional safety up in the box. And we're told uh, Jeremiah Holloman off the field with apparent injuries in the medical tent, and the dogs will go with fields here. No, that's uh, in the wild dog with DeAndre Swift. Snap, catches it with one hand, Swift out of the wild dog, and he's wild dog running it down inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. DeAndre Swift went wide to catch the snap with his right hand and then took off running to the left at left tackle and picked up yardage down to the 35-yard line, a 15-yard run. Hardman out of the ball game, limping to the near sideline. Miko Hardman shaken up on that play with that tender ankle that he's been working with. It's a first down, however, Georgia at the Tiger 35. Quick penetration there from Auburn but DeAndre Swift able to get outside of it and had a nice hole and a good block by Isaac Nada creating that crease. Jim Chaney Georgia's offensive coordinator showing another wrinkle there. Here's Fromm going to hand off the more traditional run now with Swift and the uh, running room is not as valuable now only a yard gain for Swift and company down to the 34. Daryl Williams with another tackle. The senior from Hoover is making a lot of stops for the Auburn defense tonight. 5.20 to go second quarter. It's 10-6. Auburn leading Georgia. 
But the dogs with a drive going here down to the Auburn 34-yard line. Brian Harrion into the backfield for the first time tonight for the Bulldogs. We've got two receivers out to the right, Ridley and Godwin, and one to the left, that's Tyler Simmons. Holloman and Hardman are out of the game right now. Shotgun snap to Fromm, hands it to Harrion, angles to the left, breaks the tackle, 30, 25, pushed out of bounds at the 20. Brian Harrion with his first carry, and he rips off 15 yards on fresh legs and a first down. Boy, great burst there by Harrion. That crease was closing fast, and Harrion able just to sneak right through it for the big pickup. Dogs right on the doorstep of the Massey Ferguson red zone. He broke a tackle from Deshaun Davis that time. A rare missed tackle by him. Thomas pushed him out of bounds at the 20. Dogs work on the near hash, moving left. 4.33 on the clock, second quarter. Dogs trying to take the lead. We trail 10-6. to six. We run Crumpton in motion from the far side, and then he curls around Fromm and goes back the other way. Fromm will throw it to Crumpton. Wide open at the flat right side at the 25. Cuts at the 20, hit at the 15, falls forward maybe to the 13-yard line. Akil Crumpton with the catch and picks up yardage down to the 13, a gain of seven. Christian Tutt made the tackle for Auburn. That catch by Crumpton, only his third this season. And a good read there by Jake Fromm. Akil Crumpton with the Arena League-type motion. Comes in motion, circles back some back around, and right to where he came from. But Jake was looking downfield, nothing there. Good patience, taking what they give him. Simmons, the receiver to the near side. Ridley to the far side. Swift in the backfield. Fromm goes under center. Second down and three for the Dogs. Swift takes the handoff and is hit immediately. Back at the 15, as a matter of fact. May give him forward progress at the 14. Hit by Deshaun Davis, the linebacker. The temper's starting to get a little chippy out there. After every play, there's some jawing going on. Players pushing each other back and forth. When Davis had Swift wrapped up around the legs and was pushing him down to the turf, and then K.J. Britt came in and got a good lick. On top of that, that didn't make the dogs very happy. It's third and four from the Auburn 14-yard line. We lost a yard on that play. Third down and four. We've had some magic on third down the last three games or so. Fromm has been very good on third down. We'll see here. He stops back to throw into the corner. He does it again. Touchdown left front corner of the end zone. Tyler Simmons. Jake Fromm is pure magic on third down. Little flat corner combination. Pretty good coverage. That ball thrown exactly where you have to throw it. Pulling Simmons down the stem a little bit into the open area. You can't execute it any better. And the third down precision from Jake Fromm just does not get enough credit. Absolutely amazing. Jay Black had given me a note last three games on third down. Fromm, 11 of 13, 172 yards and four touchdowns. Well, you can add another 14-yard touchdown throw to those numbers as the Dogs take the lead. The point after try by Blankenship is good. It's Georgia 14, Auburn 10. That touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Georgia leads for the first time tonight. It's the Dogs 14, Auburn Auto Parts. Dogs take the lead. Correction on the score. Got excited going into the break. It's 13 to 10, Georgia, not 14. 13 to 10. Dogs with a 14-yard touchdown pass from Jake Fromm to Tyler Simmons. 18th TD pass by Fromm this year. The first touchdown catch by Simmons this season. His second career touchdown. A 14-yarder. It was a 59-yard eight-play drive. 450 off the clock. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. Here's Blankenship's kick high, hanging in the air. Going to be returnable uh, from the goal line. Here's Igbenogany running straight. He got clobbered. The ball came out. Auburn falls on it at the 18-yard line. My goodness. Auburn's ball. They recovered the fumble. LeCount and Beal on the hit. Let's go down to the sidelines. Chuck Dowdle's got a Cook's Pest Control report. Chuck. Yeah, uh, Scott, I think you noticed earlier J.J. Holloman went in under the tent. We don't have official word, but I will tell you he's out on the sideline running around with his teammates. Uh, I fully expect that he'll be back in on offense. 
Maybe just wanted to get warm. Is that tent heated in there? If it, if it is, I'll be headed in there shortly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay tuned for the Amco Transmissions Halftime Report with Neil Hondo Williamson, presented by Amco Transmission Center of Metro Atlanta. Here's Stidham going to throw from the 17 on first down. He fires near side, caught on the near sideline at the 23. Ryan Davis pushed out of bounds by Mark Webb, the secondary man from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, up to the 24. The gain is seven. It'll be second down and three. Not a lot of time left here in the quarter. 226, clock moving. Stidham in the shotgun from Auburn's own 24-yard line. They slide Davis in motion from the left to the right side. He settles in the slot. Stidham forced out of the pocket. Flush to the right. Throws it to get rid of it into the Georgia sideline. Chased by Devontae Wyatt, whose name we've called a few times tonight. The big sophomore from Decatur. Well, on that first down play, Dogs went back to single safety, and every time we do it, Stidham is just eating us up with quick passing on the outside. Either quick bubble screens, that was just a quick out to Davis. On that first down play, we can, we, we switch on that second down play, go cover two, get up and, and press on the outside, trying to take away the quick game from Auburn. They moved the ball up to the 25-yard line. Now, wait a minute, Auburn's going to call a time. At the last second, they called timeout. First charge timeout of the half, Auburn. And Auburn will use that first timeout with 2.13 to go as we'll hold it right here with Georgia leading the three yards and a touchdown. Justin Fields one for one on his only a pass attempt. It was uh, one of those little forward shovels to Tyler Simmons that gained a yard. That's your second quarter recap. Nissan knows game day is all about the game-winning drive, so Rogue has available technologies that will help make the day's best drive getting to the stadium. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. So the ball's on the 25 now. I, I think the previous play it was back on the 24. It was almost like they moved it up a yard. Nonetheless, third down and about three for Auburn. Stidham back in the shotgun from their own 25. In the pocket, looks, looks, surveys, throws it to the left in the flat too high off the fingertips of Whitlow. He was open in the left flat, but we had two red shirts converging on him. He jumped in the air, tried to make the catch. It glanced off his fingertips and incomplete. Good coverage there by the dogs. Showed cover two. Actually went cover three. I think it confused Stidham just a little bit on his initial read because we adjusted late. He got to his check down, but he got there a little bit late, as you mentioned, Scott had a couple of dogs in hot pursuit, but that ball too high. Here's uh, Aaron Sipos to punt it for Auburn. Hardman, the deep receiver. Boy, we could use a good return right here with 2.07 to go in the half. Sipos with uh, a wobbler going to curl to the middle of the field and a fair catch asked for and made by Hardman at the 30 and a half yard line. Dogs will have the ball. A lot of time, two minutes to go. There's a 45 yard punt, no return. Hardman forced to use the fair catch there. Uh, The dogs have uh, 70 yards in front of them. Less than that if they want to get three. Actually 69 now. They put the ball on the 31-yard line. Scana Energy is a proud partner of the Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the dogs score, Scana Energy will make a $500 donation to the UGA General Scholarship Fund. Uh, Two minutes on the clock. Still two timeouts as well. Auburn with two punts tonight. Second punt of the game. Georgia has yet to punt. And they'll go to a two-minute drill here at the end of the second quarter. Two receivers out wide to their right. Fromm out of the shotgun. Draw play to Swift. Swift got room to run. Straight up the gut. Cross the 40 to the 50 into Auburn territory to the 45-yard line. Boy, he's quick. Just weaving his way up the field. Broke a tackle from Darrell Williams. Hit by Jordan Peters, the nickelback. Down to the 45 of Auburn. A gain of 24. First down dogs. We go no huddle and go quickly. From the 45. Fromm with time to look. He throws it to Nauta. Catches it. Tight ropes the near sideline. Falls out of bounds to stop the clock at the 42-yard line of the Tigers. Actually, I don't think he got out of bounds, Scott. Clock is still rolling. That's unfortunate. It's second down now and about a long six, maybe seven for the dogs from the Tiger 42-yard line. Clock at 120 and still moving. Fromm takes the snap. Here comes a blitz, and Fromm gets rid of the ball, just heaves it over the Georgia bench as Fromm was uh, had uh, Swift out in the left flat, but he didn't have time to look and try to get the ball to him. He just had to get rid of it in that direction. Strong side backer and, and Mike backer there on the dogs for Auburn, bringing pressure. We didn't have it picked up. Good job by Jake just getting rid of that one. 
So it'll be third down now for the Dogs, third and seven from the Auburn 42. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Dogs with a third down try here, five for seven and a half thus far. Fromm drops back on the near hash on our side of the 50, dumps it over the middle of the line of scrimmage to Swift. He catches it at the 39, runs laterally to the near sideline, tackled at the 39, short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and four. Clock still moving, under a minute to go. And the Dogs keep the offense on the field. Ball's on the 38 of Auburn. The gain was four that time. Dogs will huddle, take their time. Going to use a timeout, it would appear, from maybe not. Watching the play clock. He's away from the huddle, looking at the uh, near sideline for signals and instructions from the coach. Play clock's down to 12. From still looking. Going to burn some time and then call a time. Kirby Smart nestles up next to one of the officials, and he'll ask for time right now. First short 55 yard have. field goal try is a possibility for Georgia. Second timeout. We shall see. The line of scrimmage is the Auburn 38. So Georgia uses a time to stop the clock with 29 seconds left. 55 yards, by the way, in case you were wondering, is Blankenship's career long. I see Camarda on the sideline loosening up a little bit. So we'll see what the dogs decide to do here. Punt it and play some defense for the final half minute. Yeah, we get the ball coming out at halftime. Blanket chips loosening up too, Z, so you don't know which direction they're going to go. Let's go down to the sidelines. Chuck Dowdle, Cook's Pest Control Report, Chuck. Yeah, Scott, right now there is virtually no wind at all down here. I mean, it is absolutely dead. And uh, Rodrigo's got that leg. We know that for a fact. So this is probably a good, a good opportunity. Let's see if we can knock three through here. Looks like they're keeping the offense on the field. And yeah. So fourth down and a short and this, three yards. Yeah, this just might be to see if we can get Auburn to jump and give us a freebie here. It's an empty set. Three receivers to the right, two to the left for Fromm from the Auburn 38-yard line. There's the snap. Here comes pressure in the pocket. Throws it over the middle. Caught at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown on fourth down. Terry Godwin. Boy, another crossing route by Terry Godwin. Uh, that ball again thrown perfectly. What a gutsy call by Kirby Smart, Cheney, this entire offensive staff to go for it there. You don't get it. You give the football back in great field position. But all of a sudden, the momentum now 100% on the side of the red and black. Dogs don't seem to need first and second down, Z. Just give us third and fourth. <laughs> Put the pressure on us. Really a something 30, else. 38 yard touchdown throw from on fourth down to Terry Godwin. Open on the slant. Got the edge on his defender. From put it on the money. And Terry was off to the races. Got some good downfield blocking and into the end zone in the left front corner. Now flags on the snap on the extra point before they snap it or while they're snapping it. Flags going everywhere. Georgia's touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. And we'll get the call from referee John McDade here as the dogs have taken, uh, added to the lead actually, 19 to 10 right now with Blankenship's point after try pending. Offside, defense, defensive player over the right guard came into the neutral zone and caused his opponent to move early. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Retry. That was a good explanation from the referee. Well, they moved the ball up a little bit. It's inside uh, the two-yard line for the point after try, so Hot Rod's extra point try will actually be spotted inside the 10 between the hashes in front of the goal post. Jake Camarda to hold it. Rodrigo Blankenship, the junior from Marietta, to attempt to boot it through. There's the snap and the hold. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And the dogs lead it 20 to 10. Oh, that was nice. Nice two-minute offense with 21 seconds. So Auburn got the little change after Georgia's two-minute drill. 21 ticks left on the clock. The uh, dogs get the touchdown of 38 yards from Fromm to Godwin. And let me check the uh, distance on the touchdown drive. It was five plays and 69 yards in a minute 39. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals 
has got you covered. Boy, just a gutsy call again. You go, you're fourth and four. Go empty set. You get man-to-man -man exactly what you want with a little slant inside, crossing route to Terry Godwin. And Jake Fromm, the accuracy he's had tonight on the vast majority of his passes, able to hit receivers in stride so we can get yards after the catch, exactly what you want to see out of your quarterback. Third touchdown catch of the year for Terry Godwin, who was injured in a good portion of the first half of this season. That's the 19th touchdown throw of the year for Fromm in his second tonight. It's 20 to 10. Georgia leading Auburn with 21 seconds left as Blankenship readies to kick it away from right to left. Igbenogany, the deep receiver. If ball goes in his direction, will sail over his head. Bounce eight and a half yards deep in the end zone over the back line for the touchback. During BMW's Drive to End Hunger Test Drive event, November 13th through the 17th, your test drive will generate 200 meals for Feeding America and receive $1,000 toward a new BMW. Visit BMWATL.com for details. And as Auburn will line up on the 25 for the final seconds of the half. If you know someone who makes an impact on their community, Team UGA presented by Georgia Powers now accepting nominations for members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude. Submit your nominations at georgiadogs.com. Auburn will run it wide to the left on first and 10 from the 25 as they veer upfield. That may have been Shivers on the carry for five yards. That's going to be the last play. It was Sean Shivers, the freshman. He got five yards, and that's going to be the end of the half as the clock ticks down that to zero. The first half. Georgia hustles off to the west end zone locker room. Auburn to the east end zone tunnel and to the locker room. And a good first half, strong second quarter by Georgia Z as Georgia leads it 20 to 10. Yeah, 266 total yards for the Dogs in that first half, 149 for Auburn. Dogs really controlled this football game. Auburn's moved the ball pretty well. Uh, but you, you take the two stalls inside the five-yard line, uh, you get seven points out of both of those. Uh, Auburn defensively not doing much to slow down the red and black train. Well, Georgia scored every time it had a possession as we uh, get set to hear from Coach Kirby Smart on the watch. Anders Carlson booted away here in the Piedmont Healthcare radio booth in the Munson Suite. He'll angle it towards the left corner, and uh, Miko Hardman will walk away from it. It'll be called a touchback as it bounces over the back line of the end zone, and the Dogs will start first and 10 from the 25 on the touchback. Better buckle up because Sirius XM is zero to everything in 150 channels. Commercial free music, entertainment, comedy, news, and, of course, coverage of every major sport, including Georgia Bulldogs football. So tune in and let's ride with Sirius XM. 25-yard line is where the dogs will begin this possession here in the third quarter. From under center, Holyfield in the backfield, takes the handoff, tries to bounce out left outside of uh, Andrew Thomas at left tackle, but the Tigers eat him up. Jeremiah Denson, the free safety up on the line of scrimmage to make the tackle, along with big Marlon Davidson, the defensive end, 6'3 and 280. We ran that right into the drop-down safety, but the dogs going back over just how we started the football game, over the backs of Andrew Thomas and Solomon Kenley. Pretty good combo over there on the left side. Gain was a yard, second down and nine. Play fake from with time, throws it out in the left flat to Holyfield. One-on-one -on -one with the defender, Christian Tut. They get too close on the sideline. Tut forces Holyfield out of bounds at the 28 gain of two it'll be third down and seven for the dogs georgia's two touchdowns tonight one on third down the other on fourth down well we had jj holliman over the middle there on a deep in route but jake was looking outside on a takeoff that we had clear in the zone never saw him Dogs, 5 of 8 on third down in the game. Fromm looking for completion here. Steps up in the pocket. Is he going to run? He angles to the right. Cuts back at the 30. Dives forward to the 32-yard line. Not going to be enough. Deshaun Davis shaking up. No, he made the tackle. That is Nick Coe shaking up for Auburn. Player injured back uh, at the 18-yard line, laying face down on the turf. It was Davis making the stop on Fromm. At the 32, it's going to be fourth down for the Dogs. We've got an injury timeout 
Be serving up its first punt of the evening. The Champions for Charity game is on every time we win. Georgia uh, Camp Twin Lakes, Salvation Army, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to each of these local charities. And for every bowl game the dogs win, Walton Gas will donate $5,000. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Ball's on the 32 of Georgia. The dogs going three and out here in this first possession of the second half. Fourth and three. Nick Moore, the snapper. Jake Camarda to punt it. Stands on his 18-yard line. Ryan Davis to return it. Auburn comes after the kick. Whistles blow. Flags down on the far sideline at the line of scrimmage. Going to be a false start, I believe, on the dogs. False start. Kicking team. All other players were not set prior to the ball being snapped. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Auburn came after it pretty strong that time. The dogs will back up five yards and kick it again. And the new line of scrimmage will be the Georgia 27. Ryan Davis, dangerous punt return man, averaging 10 yards a punt per return, I should say. Not as good as Miko Hardman, who leads the Southeastern Conference at about 24 yards per kick return. Camarda gets it away, not real high. Wobbler going to come down to Davis on the 35, runs by one man, runs by another across the 40, the 45 to the 48, nine yard lines where they spot it. Channing Tindall, freshman linebacker. Now they bring it back, put it on the 48 on the logo. And Auburn with very good field position to start their first possession of the second half at their own 48. Actually, their best field position of the contest thus far. It was only a 37-yard punt and a 12-yard return. Yeah, not hit very well. 37 yards, not a whole lot of hang time. Perfect ball to return there that pays off with great field position for the Tigers. Auburn moving to the left. Stidham in the shotgun. They shift the back. Shivers takes the handoff, runs to the near side. Over the 50 into Georgia territory, 45 down to the 44. Crowd of tacklers led by Walter Grant and Monty Rice, two of our linebackers, after a gain of almost seven to the Georgia 44 and a half. Yeah, it serves just like a sweep, but you're doing it out of the shotgun. You get a bunch of big bodies. Leading the way. Second down three. Stidham with a quick throw. Belted at the 37-yard line was Williams. Ball's incomplete. Tyreek McGee may have tipped it away. And then Monty Rice brought the hammer. (laughs) He let Seth Williams know the middle of the field is mine. Boy, no doubt about it. Great job by Monty Rice getting over there, letting letting his presence be felt. Just a quick slant route. The ball thrown, though, on the back hip of the receiver. And with converging dogs, no way he was going to bring that one in. Third down and about three for the Tigers. They're one for four on third down tries tonight from the Georgia. 45 and a half throw to Slayton is incomplete. Slayton, a short slant from the near side. And that pass was nowhere near. I don't know if he fell down or if if the pass was just that far off target. But Stidham fails to complete on third down. And the Tigers send the punt unit on. Well, Slayton stopped his route. He got tangled up. Looking at the replay, I see that, yeah. He got tangled up with DeAndre Baker just a little bit. Stopped his route. Stidham thought Slayton was going to continue on the slant route, which he should have done. The receiver did not hit the spot. Godwin back to receive the kick. They're trying to pooch it. High hanging punt by Sipos. And Auburn tried to catch the punt away from Godwin, who's trying to make a fair catch. That's going to be punt catch uh, inter- interference there on Auburn. As they had a guy, uh, Marquise McLean, just stepped in front of Terry and tried to down the football. He was trying to catch it in the air. Godwin was trying to make the fair catch. 17, kicking team. I'm not sure if I've ever penalty. seen that. Well, I don't <laughs> think I have. Or it be a first down. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's going to cost them 15 yards. They would have had Georgia inside the 15-yard line. It was a 35-yard punt with the penalty. Dogs have the ball at the 26. Timeout here in the third quarter, 12-21 remaining. Georgia 20, all quarterback under center, handoff swift. So they grab him up high around the pads and knock him down as he nears the line of scrimmage at the 25. That was Andrew Williams. 6'4 and 286, a senior from Sunflower, Alabama. Got a big arm up there and held Swift in check at the 25. Actually lost a yard, so it'll be second and 11 now. 
Very rarely have we had situations like this in the football game today. We have dominated first down. This is not where you want to play from against this Auburn defense from behind the chains. And Auburn has been great this year. 78 coming into the game, 78 tackles for loss. They are great at getting into the backfield. From play fake, he throws, caught, left side, juggled, and then dropped. That was Jeremiah Holloman. J.J. couldn't hang on to it, had it, and then lost it. Igbenogany in coverage for Auburn. Had a big interception in their comeback win against Texas A&M last week late in the fourth quarter. Here was an incompletion. It'll be third and 11. Back on the Georgia 25 now. Well, really good coverage there, but that's a perfectly thrown football. Should have been caught. Dogs with Gilliard at center. Baker's at right guard now. Kenley at left guard. Then Thomas and Wilson are the tackles. Flagged down in the backfield of Georgia. Legal substitution on the offense. 12 players in formation. Five-yard penalty. Third down. We don't quite have that flow we had to end the first half here to start the second. As the dogs are penalized five yards back to the 20. Well, that, that flow starts with your execution on first down. So far in these first couple of drives, haven't been able to get into those situations where we're second medium, second and short, where you've got the entire playbook open to you. Everyone's in tight here on third and very long. Swift in the backfield, Fromm in the shotgun. There's the snap, play fake, Fromm to throw. He's going deep ball, he's got Hardman caught over the shoulder. 45, he's angled out of bounds. Boy, he had some running room, but his angle and momentum took him out of bounds. But a big first down on there's that third down magic again, Z. Third and 15, they pick it up. It just keeps happening, and give thanks there to Auburn. A little busted coverage that allowed me, Cole, to get free. 32 yards for the Scana Energy first down. First and 10 at the Auburn 48. Give it to Swift. Bounces out left. Auburn 45. Hit at the 42. Drives down to the 40-yard line. Hit by Deshaun Davis, the linebacker. But eight yards on the hard run by the freshman, the sophomore, rather, from Philadelphia. DeAndre Swift down to the Tiger 40. It'll be second and two. Draws continue to pound the left side behind Andrew Thomas and Solomon Kenley. Holyfield comes in now. Give Swift a little, little bit of a breather. Again, everybody in tight. Ball on the far hash. Georgia moving right. Dogs in red. Auburn in white. Play fake. Fromm tucks it. Drops back. Throws. He's got a guy. Oh, incomplete. Hardman. Hardman down around the 18. Auburn had, had a cushion of about four or five yards on me, Cole. Christian Tut was the closest defender over there, but... The ball looked like it just bounced off the body or the hands of Hardman. I think he was just turning around late, and the ball was right there. Maybe it surprised him, or maybe he just dropped it because he thought he was going to get whacked. Yeah, a little alligator arms right there. Miko ran a wheel route. Well-designed play. He was running wide open down the sideline. I don't think Miko thought that Jake was going to throw it on a line like that, but it was exactly what he needed to do. Third and two, snap and flags down. Play blown dead. John McDade, the All referee. Start. Six. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's our seventh penalty of the night. Walk off five yards. Well, this might be right in our wheelhouse here. Third and uh, what? Third and seven. <laughs> Boy, it has, it has been for three games in we a row. We shall see. The dogs 60% on third down tonight. That's pretty good. In fact, that's outstanding. We'll see if they can extend it here. Six out of ten on third down tries. Balls on the Auburn 45-yard line. Georgia 20, Tigers 10 here in the third quarter. Hardman in motion to the left. He settles on the left edge. Fromm on the far hash. Looks, throws, finds Hardman. Offer on the left side. He catches it at the 42. He gets the first down. Yes, sir. Down to the 36-yard line. A scan of energy first down. That is DeAndre Swift, not Hardman. But either way, it's a first down. Great job by Jake Fromm. Staying patient. Coverage was pretty good. DeAndre Swift snuck out of the backfield on a little out route. That was his check down. He found him. And a good job knowing where the chains are to get the first down. Ball just outside the Tiger 35. Igbenogany on the stop for the Auburn defense. Clock at 10.08 and moving here in the third quarter. Georgia leads by 10. Everybody in tight again on both edges of the line of scrimmage. We shift the tight end to the right. Hand off Swift. Swift sidesteps the man. Swift, 35, cuts back at the 30, running the other way. Angles to his left. Dragged down at the 25 by Darrell Williams, the linebacker. There wasn't a whole lot there, but the shiftiness of Swift, again, making people miss. 
finding big chunks of yardage. He's just ripping off 10 at a time. That's another Scanna Energy first down for the dogs at the Tiger 25-yard line. DeAndre Swift now 12 carries, make it 13 carries for 71 yards. He's the leading rusher in the ball game by a wide margin. Godwin in motion hard from right to left. Fromm fakes the throw to him in the flat, looks to the other way, and picked off! Picked off at the 15-yard line. He tried to force it in tight man coverage to Jason Stanley. It's intercepted by Jarrell Dean. Yeah, that ball needed to be on the outside shoulder of Stanley. Threw really it on the, the inside. Is an interception by the Really defense. good coverage. First down. Dean with the interception and down at the 19-yard line. Auburn stops the drive with a turnover. Yep, and looking at the replay, you're right, Z. Threw it inside, needed to be outside. If it's outside, he completes it probably. That is absolutely right. I mean, that ball's probably two yards off target. Rolling on the field in the previous down is an interception by the defense. This play is now under video review. All right, did he juggle it going to the turf or I something? I don't think so. It looks like he's got it in his hands the entire way. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're reviewing, but they are reviewing it. And it's brought to you by Barbasol, offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with the code FOOTBALL at Barbasol.com. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day. And to your community, too, visit GeorgiaPower.com backslash sports to learn more. So the first turnover of the ball game swings in favor of Auburn with an interception of Fromm, Jake's fifth interception of the year. Is that a catch? Is that what they're looking at on the replay? Yeah, the ball moved a little bit when he hit the ground, but I think he always had it in his control. I don't... After video review, the ruling of interception is confirmed. First down. That's the tenth pick of the year for the Auburn defense. And Dean second, junior from Cocoa, Florida. Now the defense has got to come up with a stop here to prevent a little bit of a momentum swing for the Tigers. Well, I got the crowd back into it a little bit more after the downer of the turnover. Now the crowd making some noise. They run a reverse to Ryan Davis. He wants to throw it. He puts it up in the air. He's hit as he's throwing. The ball going to wobble to the ground and bounce over on the far side. I don't think that was a fumble. I think they would rule that a forward pass. It was the handoff to Whitlow. Throwing on the field is a And then to Davis on the reverse. The ball belongs to the offense at that spot. Second down. And Ledbetter, I think, blew it up as he clobbered Davis. <laughs> Boy, did he ever. As Davis was trying to get the ball out of his hands. Well, the trick play on Auburn didn't work. Well, they called that a fumble. And the ball's back on the 15-yard line. So the Tigers, second and long now, back on their own 15. Hand off, they run it to Shivers, near side. Cuts up field, he's got running room, 30, 35, 40. And LeCount going to shove him hard into the Georgia sideline. He goes sliding on the tarp towards one of the benches near the hedge. But a big gain for Sean Shivers. Boy, he's got some speed. Richard LeCount shoving him out of bounds on the near sideline, but the ball up to the 46-yard line. And we had contained there with our linebackers, and we took a really bad route, which allowed Shivers to get outside. Big 31-yard gain for Auburn, their longest play of this contest. First and 10 Tigers from their 46. Throw, Stidham, caught at the Georgia 45 by Seth Williams, twisted to the turf by the linebacker, Monty Rice. Right there where he caught it is about nine and three-quarter yards. It's going to be second and very short for the Tigers at the Georgia 44-yard line. Some confusion there by the dogs. We brought two people over one guy. Shouldn't have done it. They go quick. They run it here with Shivers again. Shivers giving them a bit of a burst here on this series. I think he got the first down. He didn't get a lot, but he got enough for the first down, maybe surging on a bit of an angle to the left to the 43-yard line. Malik Herring and Jordan Davis crowding up the gaps there, but that was a first down play. Excuse me, he only got uh, a couple of inches. It is second down and, and still most of that to go. Second down, nine and three quarters. Dogs bringing in a host of substitutions here. 
Man in motion to the near side, Davis. Stidham wants to throw it to him, but we blocked the pass from DeAndre Walker, who had pressure on the quarterback. He tipped the pass as Stidham was trying to go to Davis on this left side. Walker's play forced an incompletion. Now it's third and long for the Tigers from the Georgia 44-yard line. They've got third down and a long nine to go. Auburn trying to set up a little slip screen there. And a good thing Walker got his hands on it because there was a ton of green grass if that ball would have been completed. Tigers on third down, just one for five tonight. Crowd making some noise. We crowd the line, rush four, straight up the gut. Stood him in the pocket on the logo, flushed out, and will drop him as he tries to scramble inside the 45, down to the 42. Julian Rochester leading the charge along with Jawan Taylor. And it's going to be fourth down for Auburn. Tackle made at the Dogs 43. The gain was won for Stidham, who had time to look from the pocket, decided to pull it down and try to get what he could, and it wasn't much. They've got the punt unit on. And it was freshman Adam Anderson with the pressure there that forced Stidham to step up into the pocket. Better discipline there with our rush lanes, keeping him inside of the pocket instead of getting outside of contain. Auburn punts it. Godwin the deep man. They're trying to pooch it. Kick is spinning backwards, checks up on the two, and just gets across the goal line on the bounce. If they had had coverage, we would have been in trouble. You love. Dogs ball, first and 10 on the 20 during the timeout. Kirby Smart uh, vehemently having a discussion with uh, much of his defense, most of it the secondary guys. He was also talking on headset to the coaches in the booth to our left. But a uh, good animated discussion going on on the sidelines for Georgia. First and 10 on our 20, Dogs 20, and Auburn 10, 6.44 to go here in the third quarter. Two receivers out to the left for the Dogs. Brahms in the shotgun, Holyfield's in the backfield. Elijah's going to get the carry, hops to the hole, straight ahead running between the tackles, up the field between the hash marks to the 25, hit by Darrell Williams, uh, the linebacker for Auburn. The gain is five, second and five for Georgia. So much power in Holyfield's running. Contact made about two, three yards downfield, able to drive forward for a couple more yards. Holyfield now with 55 yards on the night. Fields in the ball game in second and five. Here comes a flag from the referee, John McDade. Is it going to be an illegal substitution? substitution? 12 in formation. Yep. Offense. Rats. Second down. Oh, we've had a couple of those tonight. Yeah, bringing a lot of guys in and out of the huddle for sure, but no reason for that. Eighth penalty on the dogs. We haven't had that penalty bug in recent games, but we're getting it tonight. Hope it doesn't derail something good here. Dogs back on the 20 now. It's second down and 10. Fromm is back in. Fields was coming in for one play, and now he goes back. And Jake is back in a quarterback. Swift in the backfield with Fromm in the shotgun. There's the snap. Gives it to Swift. Breaks the tackle. 20, 25, 30. Runs through a man at the 35, but he hangs on for dear life. Jamie and Sherwood just kind of grabbed him in passing and hold, hung on for a little bit of a ride at the 36. A quick 16-yard burst and a scan of energy first down at the 36 for the Dogs. Boy, good quick penetration there by Auburn, but Swift able to hop through the initial hole, get to the second level, and then just took off like a jet. Swift nearing 100 yards on the evening. Play fake from. No, he gives it to Swift. Swift. Oh, there's that move again. Oh, he cut and went right by Auburn's big uh, linebacker, Davis, and into Auburn territory. Swift down to the Tiger 45-yard line. Play 19 yards and another first down. Now, the play before, he runs somebody over. This time, he's breaking ankles again. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love watching that guy run. He's over 100 yards for the third straight ball game. Charlie Werner with a block to help spring him on the right edge. The snap is out. It trickles back to Fromm, the quarterback. But wait a minute. Now they're saying it was uh, touched on the ground when Fromm went down to a knee to field the, field the fumble, the errant snap. And they both blow the play dead at the Auburn 49. So a loss of about four yards on that uh, botched snap, apparently. Well, that one could have been disastrous. I think Lamont Gilliard thought that Jake was underneath him and he was back in the shotgun. Is, is that, I mean, can't you tell the difference? You, you, you should be able to, but who knows? Contact. Oh, uh, no, it just slipped out of his hands, actually. Did it? Okay. The ball just slipped out of his hands. Looked at the replay. 
All right, here's a handoff to Holyfield. He runs for the left side, cuts downfield at, at midfield to the 45, hopping over some folks on the left edge and down to the where? The 40, the 39 and a half. Christian Tut, the secondary man on the stop for Auburn. Again, over the left side of this offensive line, Andrew Thomas and Solomon Kenley having one heck of a ball game. Almost 10 full yards on the run by Holyfield makes it third and manageable. But yep. tonight, most third downs have been manageable. It's third and five from the Auburn 39 and a half. Dogs moving to the right from to pass. Pressure from the edges. He steps up. Oh, he threw it behind his man, uh, Tyler Simmons. Simmons was open in the right side, spinning around, trying to make the grab. And he was unable to do so. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Boy, Jake just never got his feet set on that one. Just kind of side-armed it out there, which is what caused the errant pass. He stepped up in the pocket, and he had his guy right there, uh, Simmons, on a linebacker. And who knows what would have happened had he caught it after the after the catch. But it didn't happen, and it's fourth down now, and the dogs have Jake Camarda on to kick it away. Ryan Davis is the punt return man, stands on the 10-yard line. Camarda will try to pooch the Tigers in a hole here. We flip-flop a man from left to right. Here comes the pooch kit. High hanging wobbler. Going to come down. Manageable. Oh, look at that. It bounces on the eight, and we field it on about the one and a half or two. Miko Hartman again. Boy, doesn't get any prettier than that. Perfect punt. Good high hang time. Let your cover man get down. Miko gets his feet set right on the goal line, knows exactly where he's at, locates the ball. Perfectly executed. Indeed, on the one-yard line, the ball inside the one just barely. So Auburn will have to climb out of a hole here, getting late in the third quarter. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. All right, the crowd on that end of the stadium needs to make a lot of racket. Auburn's on its own one-yard line. Stidham in the shotgun in the end zone. Bring a man in motion. He hands it on a delay to Shivers. Shivers trying to bounce out right. We carry it right down the line with Stokes and Rochester and Wyatt and Rice. <laughs> Half the defense. Otis Reese in there, too. He hit him first, as a matter of fact. The Great. gain is a yard to the two. Great pursuit there by the dog. Stuffed up the middle of the, the line of scrimmage there. Then had a whole host of dogs, as you just mentioned. Getting in on the tackle. Second down, nine for the Tigers. Whitlow's in the backfield with Stidham in the shotgun. They're in the end zone. Down to the far right end of the stadium here. Stidham rushes up to the line. Six seconds on the clock. He's trying to change the play. Two seconds, one second. Has to ask for time. Just barely. Well, the noise did it in that end zone. They forced Auburn to call a timeout. I hear you, Bulldog Nation. Keep it up. Auburn calls time as the play clock was down to a second. It's going to be second and nine. Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. For every bowl game the Dogs win, Walton Gas will donate $5,000. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Comcast Business scoreboard, Georgia Tech 27, Miami 14 in the fourth quarter. Clemson 13, Boston College 7 in the second. More noise on second and nine out of that east end zone here at Sanford Stadium. Stidham's in the shotgun in the end zone. Quick throw on a slant is caught at the 10-yard line, almost tipped away. That was Sean Williams coming in from the left side on a quick crossing route, and he's hit first by Natrez Patrick, and then Monty Rice finished the tackle, but they got out of the hole a little bit, almost a full 10 yards up to the 11 and a half, almost the 12, but they got a first down. Good job getting the defensive look that Auburn wanted with use of that motion. Brought a receiver all the way across the formation to the outside. That got us out of cover two and into cover three, which opened up the throwing line. Auburn on the far hash has three receivers on the near side. They'll run it with Whitlow at right tackle. Whitlow straight up the hash marks across the 15 to about the 17-yard line. Natrez Patrick, the linebacker, with the tackle. And that'll bring up second down. And five, a gain of five for Jartavius Whitlow. Booby Whitlow is what everybody calls him. At least that's what I was told. I don't really call him that. Don't know him personally. Second down and five for the Tigers. 
from the 17, their own 17. They're trying to get out of a hole coming from the one. Whitlow's asking for a repeat of the signs in the backfield. He's twirling his hands. They'll play fake it and throw it to the near side. Throw it to Ryan Davis. He had a blocker on this near side, but Ledbetter and McGee fight through that and make the tackle at the 21-yard line. A uh, nifty little screen there. You, you bring the receiver down the line of scrimmage, throw a quick screen pass to him, and then you get your guard out in front of him. They go quick. We aren't set. They get the first down and a little bit more. We weren't set and ready to go. They were. They snapped the ball. And uh, straight ahead running by Whitlow. Up near the 30, tackle made by Taylor and Baker. Stidham will fire it out to the right. A screen to that side. To Davis again, catches it. Deep on the right side of the field, around the 27. Up the field he goes to the 32-yard line. And we twist him down there. The gain is about three, maybe four. Balls on the Auburn 32 or just across it. Tigers coming off their own one-yard line. We're still substituting, guys. The center judge is over the ball, so they won't snap it until we finish with our substitutions. Now Auburn shifts. They go empty set. Three receivers right, two to the left for Stidham. He walks up behind the line of scrimmage, barks something out. Georgia shifting on defense. 35 seconds to go in the quarter. Snap on second down. Stidham with all kinds of time. Pump fakes, pump fakes, pulls it down, backpedaling, and then just chunks it over the Auburn bench. He didn't have anything downfield. He wasn't feeling a whole lot of pressure until late in that possession. Yeah, that's a covered sack all the way. Good job of the by the dogs just staying disciplined. A lot of movement, a lot of motion right now coming out of this Auburn offense. Dogs adjusting to it well. Beal and Ledbetter finally forced Stidham to get rid of it. Ledbetter comes out of the ball game. Ron Corson from Georgia's athletic trainer going to take a look at him. He's shaking up a little bit. It's third down and seven for Auburn from their own 32-yard line. Stidham with a four-receiver set, five if you count the back. And he'll throw it to the back. Whitlow catches it in the right flat at the 28. And we clobber him. Oh, loss on the play. Clobbered him at the 31-yard line. Richard LeCount, number one. Mark Webb, number two. Boy, well-designed defensive play. We brought corner fire, but everybody in position. Stidham saw it, got it to his hot receiver. But all kinds of dogs there to make the tackle. Going to be fourth down and eight. For the Tigers, the loss on the play of a yard, and that's the end of quarter number three. Well, no scoring, but the Dogs maintain their 10-point lead. They're lighting up Sanford here as we get ready for the fourth quarter. Final 15 minutes coming up. And the Dogs with 15 minutes before they finish up with Auburn here. Auburn trailed by 10 late in the fourth quarter. Came back to beat Texas A&M last week. Here they are fourth and eight from their own 31 to start the fourth period. And it's uh, Aaron Sipos, a Melbourne, Australia native, to kick it away to Miko Hardman. He runs a couple of steps to the right and booms one deep near the sideline. Hardman right on the sideline, makes the catch at the 23. Didn't ask for the fair catch, and he got a, a yard after he caught it. He was hugging the near sideline, caught the ball at the 24 or so, I guess, and got to the 25. It was a 45-yard kick. And a one-yard return. Dogs. dogs ball at the 25. Excuse me, see? No, sorry about that, Scott. Dogs just a little bit out of sync here offensively. Substitution penalties, a little bit sloppy with the, the football in a couple of cases, the interception, the, the botch snap. See if we can get it figured out here on this drive. Justin Fields will start this series for Georgia as we open up the fourth quarter. Dogs ball, first and 10 at our own 25. Fields, the freshman from Kennesaw. Swift in the backfield. DeAndre will get the carry. He hesitates. He waits for a bit of a hole. He runs on an angle to the right, a right tackle. And up the field he goes for about uh, four yards, maybe three. They unstack the pile, put it down between the hash marks at the 28, I believe. T.D. Moultrie, defensive end from Birmingham on the tackle. The gain was three, second and seven. Good read by Fields on that read option. Defensive end. Held his ground. Got to give the football. Balls on our 28. Swift in the backfield. Fromm's back in at quarterback. And Auburn may have jumped off sides there. We shall see. Flags fly everywhere. The whistles blow. Play is dead. Auburn's pointing at us. We're not pointing back. Officials are discussing it. Number 53. Clinching is offhand. (laughs) Five yard penalty. Second down. (laughs) Clinching is offhand. Is that what he said? (laughs) 
you're not allowed to clench your off hand your off hand if you've got your other hand on the ball well i can't but that's something else maybe you know unless he moved his arm too <laughs> i mean that used to be i guess but, they used to call that a snap infraction that's a ninth penalty on georgia nonetheless ball back on the 23 now from handoff swift swift breaks the tackle at 25 30 changes directions 40 swift's got room over midfield 45 40 there he goes 30 20 15 10 dear satellite touchdown swift done it again what an amazing block by jj holloman he drove a defensive back from auburn maybe 15 or 20 yards fantastic isaac nada with one as well but a pancake by J.J. Holloman. Swift flatlined Auburn defense with a 77-yard run to the end zone. Wow, that guy's electric. Point after try on the way. That touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Here's Blankenship. In his pink slippers. That kick is up and good. I like those kind of drives. Boy, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> wow. 77 yards. 83 last week. 77 this week. We love some DeAndre Swift. Our new score at Sanford. Georgia 27. Auburn 10. Timeout here in the fourth. Back in a moment. Bulldogs Sports Network. Napa know-how. You're there every game. Same time, same spot, sporting your team's gear and flipping bird. Seven-yard DeAndre Swift TD run. Here's the anomaly in uh, sports statistics. It was a 77-yard run by Swift. The drive was 75 yards in two plays, and it only took a minute. That's your Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. And the reason, of course, we were penalized during that drive, the original line of scrimmage was at the 25-yard line. And then we went backwards a little bit, and Swift cleaned it up and took care of that in a big way with a 77-yard touchdown run. Georgia Medals drive summary. Did I say that already? As uh, Blankenship kicks it off and drills another touchback, ball sailing, twisting, spinning in over the back line of the end zone. We're here in the Piedmont Healthcare radio booth. Inside the Munson broadcast suite, having a good old time here in the fourth quarter. Right now, the dogs are up by 17 with 13.53 to go. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Auburn first and 10 on its 25 after yet another touchback by Blankenship. Swift now on the night 17 for 186. Auburn, whole team 17 for 82 yards rushing. Stidham out around the left corner. Got some uh, running room. He slides feet first at the 35 after he run around the left edge and up the field for 10 yards and a first down. They put the ball on the 35. That was a check at the line of scrimmage there by Stidham to go to the run option. They're going to go real quick now. They hand it off to Whitlow. On a run pass option, he starts to the right. That wasn't the right decision because he's covered up by a gang of red shirts at the 30, led by DeAndre Walker, who jammed Whitlow up first. Five-yard loss on the play. Tried to swing around wide to the right, and Whitlow got gobbled up. Boy, you want to know the small things that make a difference? between good teams and great football teams. The dogs in that situation, every one of our running backs, play was a dead play. They stick their head down and they just get what they can get, live to fight another down. Whitlow there trying to reverse force for a huge loss. Four receiver set, five as the back goes out. Stidham finds a receiver over on the left side. He catches it at the 33. That's Ryan Davis. He tried to plant and turn, and when he did, he lost his footing and fell down on the 33-yard line. So the gain is three, and it's going to be third down and some work to do. Third down and a dozen for the Tigers on their own 33-yard line, moving to the right here in the fourth quarter at Sanford Stadium with the Dogs leading it 27-10. to 10. Good, cover, good coverage there by Mark Webb. Perfect position. 
Auburn just two for eight on third downs tonight. There's the snap to Stidham in the shotgun. Back on the 24. Now rolls out of the pocket, running to the right. Looking, looking. We're chasing. We're grab his legs as he's going down. He made the catch out of bounds. However, at the 40, it's incomplete. As we had Adam Anderson wrapping up Stidham around the legs and the ankles as he was going down to the turf. He let that ball fly. His receiver, Seth Williams, caught it on the Georgia sideline, but well out of bounds at the 40. Incomplete will bring up fourth down, and it's punt time for Auburn. It's the third or fourth time we've called Adam Anderson's name tonight. Big power rush, and then as soon as Stenham got out outside the, the, the contain and outside the pocket, Anderson able to separate from the blocker and then use his speed to track him down. Aaron Sipos to punt it away. Terry Godwin hustles out. Back at the 30 to receive the kick. Brought big Jordan Davis up there to rush the punt. He just about knocked down the whole wedge. We make a fair catch with Godwin at the 27-yard line. Dogs ball, 12.04 to go in this contest. Timeout on the field. It's Georgia 27. Com. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Based on Quicken Loans data and comparison of public data records. Coach Kirby Smart here. Today's broadcast is live from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth. Yes, indeed, we are. Dogs ball here in the fourth quarter, first and 10 on our 27. During BMW's Drive to Win Hunger Test Drive event, November 13th through the 17th, your test drive will generate 200 meals for Feeding America and receive $1,000 toward a new BMW. Visit BMWATL.com for details. Georgia 27, Auburn 10. A lot of time remaining. Fourth quarter, 12.04 to go in the ballgame. Dogs first and 10 here from our 27. From in at quarterback in the shotgun. Hands it off to Brian Harrion. Harrion runs to the right, bounces off one tackle, keeps the legs moving, and gets positive yardage out of it. Probably shouldn't have had anything. Hit at the line of scrimmage, kept churning, kept getting some blocks, and he pushes the ball out at, to the 34-yard line. Yeah, great individual effort there by Harry and simple dive right into the middle of the line of scrimmage. Met with a bunch of white jerseys. Just kept spinning and turning his way for yardage. He got a seven-yard gain. He shouldn't have had anything. Deshaun Davis made the tackle, the Auburn linebacker. Dogs begin to move a little more slowly now. Take their time. Milk some of that clock here in the fourth. 11.25, clock moving. Second down and three from handoff. Harry and patient, hesitates. Now hits the hole. Drives his legs across the 35, up to the 36, maybe even the 37. Smoke Monday, freshman from Atlanta, free safety for Auburn on the tackle. And they'll spot the ball at the Georgia 37-yard line, it would appear. Gain of three. And it'll be third down and less than a yard to go. Another big block there by Solomon Kenley. Chipped initially, then got up on his man and just kept driving him. Dogs very good on third down tonight. Now they're going to go wild dog with Holyfield. 7 of 12 on third down. Fromm flares out to the right. Holyfield lines up behind the center. There's the shotgun snap. Give it to Holyfield. Going to run to the right. Angled to the 40 and into the Auburn sideline. He got the first down. Pushed out of bounds by Daniel Thomas. Gain was three out of the wild dog. Dogs will move the sticks, maintain possession, and milk some more of that clock. Boy, you've seen it happen so many times from the dogs. Get up, get a comfortable lead, get into the fourth quarter, and then just grind the clock down to nothing. Fromm just waiting around, trying to keep his hands warm. He's, he's got him tucked in the belt line. No, he's got him tucked in that little hand warmer that's uh, around his waist, keeping his hands nice and toasty as we tick under 10 minutes to go in the game. Now he's ready to go on first and 10 from the 40. Keep it on the ground with Holyfield. Elijah dives through the gap at left guard behind Kinley's block. Two-yard gain. Daryl Williams makes contact in the tackle for Auburn. Georgia's lead is 17 points, 27 to 10 here. 9.35 remaining in the quarter. Nauta comes out of the ballgame for the Dogs. Georgia with four receivers in this formation. Holyfield in the backfield. Werner in at tight end on the right side. He's in the slot to the right. And you've got Godwin and Holloman on the near side. Werner and Ridley out to the right. Dogs standing at the line of scrimmage, watching that clock tick down. The play clock's at six. Now Fromm back in the shotgun and ready to go. Snap, handoff, Holyfield, gap. 
Holyfield, 45, over midfield, 45, 40, and dragging a guy down right on the 40-yard line. Christian Tutt made the tackle, dragging Holyfield down, but not before. A nice uh, 20-yard run and a first down by Elijah. For a huge hole opened up that time. Solomon Kinley again with the big block. Lamont Gilliard as well. That was a trap right over Lamont Gilliard. Kinley at the left guard. He's a big boy. He can move some people out. Oh, there's he? no doubt. He's been doing it all <laughs> afternoon, too. From or Fields is in at quarterback. Shotgun snap. They flip it. No, they fake the uh, fake the uh, little toss pass, and Fields just runs it right behind Cook, who went in motion in front of him. Fields up the near hash down to the 36-yard line. Marlon Davidson, and it was just Davidson on the stop at the 36-yard line. The gain was four for Justin Fields. And he'll stay in the ball game. Second straight game. The dogs have produced better than 300 yards on the ground. Boy, pretty remarkable against two very good defensive fronts as well. Second down for the dogs on the Auburn 36 yard line. Georgia moving to the west end zone. They slide him in in motion from the right side. Fields takes the snap. He throws on the run. Wide open in the flat is Ridley at the 29 to the 25. Sideline 20. Running through tacklers down to the 16, maybe 17. Christian Tutt, the last to get uh, Ridley on. Was that Ridley? It was Ridley, wasn't it? On the ground. Yes, it was Riley Ridley on that far sideline getting the first down. And the stop down at the 17-yard line. That was a, say, 19-yard pickup, I believe. First and 10 for the Dogs. Call it a 17-yard gain. Instead, Tut with the tackle. Good accurate throw. Just a, an out route on the sideline. You move Justin Fields in the pocket, but a good accurate throw on the run. And good job by Ridley staying in bounds. Fields stays in, takes the shotgun snap. Will run it after a play fake on an end around to Cook. Runs straight ahead for not much to the 15 and a half half hit first by Davis who's made a boatload of tackles for the Auburn defense the middle linebacker came into the game leading Auburn in that category and third in the SEC as Georgia works here inside the Massey Ferguson red zone experience the compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong this is where Auburn has been strong in the red zone throughout this season yielding a touchdown in the red zone less than 30 percent of the time Georgia felt that wrath in the first half We'll see if uh, they feel it again here as the game has gone on. Georgia's gotten stronger. Auburn has not. Fields the quarterback. Shotgun snap. Gives it to Holyfield. Trying to pull away from a man at the 14-yard line. He's hopping over blockers and bodies. And Dontavius Russell, a senior from Carrollton, Georgia, hanging on to Holyfield to a leg, trying to get him to the ground. They finally stop him at the 12-yard line. Boy, that was... One tackle away from being pay dirt for sure. Holyfield hopping through the line of scrimmage. Just couldn't get out of that one arm tackle. Trey Hill has come into the ball game at center. He played the majority of the game at center last week in Lexington after Lamont Gilliarder was injured. And he was uh, limping off again. That's why Hill has entered the ball game once again. Dogs letting the play clock tick down. They're going to take a timeout. I think uh, Lamont is going into the uh, medical tent on the Georgia sideline. So Georgia will call a time, stop the clock, 5.45 to go. It's 27 to 10, Georgia leading Auburn. Timeout in Athens. Back to Sanford Stadium for the finish of this thing. After he's staying in the game, or uh, he is not. He's coming back out, but he's walking all on his own and um, limping just a little. But looks like looks like that uh, it's nothing really serious. All right, Chuck, thanks. I see Lamont. He's got his helmet off, so Trey Hill in the game at center. It'll be third down from the Auburn 12 for the Dogs. Georgia 27, Auburn 10. Dogs trying to add a few more nails here and finish off the Tigers. Justin Fields in at quarterback in the shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap, sets and fires into the end zone, and incomplete. Trying to go to Holloman the now. There comes a penalty flag from the field judge. A little bit delayed, but he made the decision through the flag. They were holding on to J.J. Holloman pretty good there in the end zone. He was he's running out the side to the left. Pass interference, number 21, defense. By roll the ball, be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Well, that's a big boo-boo by Smoke Monday, the freshman from Atlanta. Interference in the end zone. Placement on the two, as referee John McDade said. Balls on the far hash. Dogs two yards away 
from tacking on another touchdown. Auburn will substitute on defense. And Georgia will huddle up. You can schedule your next visit with a new online booking tool at Piedmont.org forward slash UGA. Piedmont Healthcare is the official health care provider of the Georgia Bulldogs. And Dogs just, going to an I formation Z with Ford as the fullback. The tight end is at full. Fields goes under center. Play fake to the fullback. Sets up. Wants to throw. Chased out of the pocket. Runs away. They trip him. He stays on his feet. And then they hit him back at the 20-yard line. Fields trying to survive hit after hit. But he got plowed by about four or five different Auburn Tigers. Finally, Andrew Williams got him down on the turf. And a big loss back to the 20-yard line. A loss of 18. Well, it's almost every time we get down to the two-yard line, we go in reverse. Dogs with a player shaken up, and we'll pause for station identification while we have a moment here on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Well, Kirby's, uh, Kirby Smart told me earlier this week that our our line's kind of been a mash unit, and uh, we're adding to it right now. The injured player is Kendall Baker, who was in for Cade Mays. And we got an injury timeout with 5.21 to go. And Gilliard was shaken up a few moments ago, so Trey Hill is in for him. Offense will huddle up uh, between the numbers and the hash mark while the uh, training staff checks on Kendall Baker. Auburn's on the far side. Crowd starting to file out a little bit. Dog fans feel pretty secure here, leading by 17 with 5.21 to go. Our sack update is brought to you by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. The dogs have not generated a sack tonight, and Auburn, one of the best in the SEC to do that, has only one. This is a team that came in with 78 tackles for loss and 29 sacks, and the dogs have uh, protected their quarterbacks pretty well. Auburn with a sack, Georgia with none. And even that sack there, that's a learning moment for Justin Fields. You, you, you drop back. Everything was covered initially. And try and try and, instead of trying to make a miraculous play, throw that football away. You've got more downs to go get it. The result when you try to make something miraculous happen too often is the kind of loss that we just experienced there. The only positive about that, if there is one, is the clock's going to tick some more. And look at this, Ben Cleveland is back in the ballgame for the first time in several weeks at right guard, coming in for Kendall Baker. So Hill at center, Cleveland back in the game after that broken leg at the right guard. They hand it off to Harrion, hand, Harrion runs that side and is inside the 15 and trying to pull two or three white shirts with it. And they finally get the best of him and throw him back the other way. But... Davis leading the charge for the Auburn defense. He got forward progress down to the 13-yard line. So the gain was seven for Brian Harrion. Dogs letting clock tick away. 438, 437, play clock at 22. Justin Fields looking to the near sideline for the play. And the Dogs third and goal now from the Auburn 13-yard line. Dogs are eating up the clock here in the fourth quarter. This is the 12th play of the drive. We've got three receivers to the near side right, uh, left, rather, and one receiver to the right. Harrion stays in the ball game, fields at quarterback, and now a flag in the Auburn secondary, and delay of game is called. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Georgia coaches Sam Pittman and Kirby Smart trying to provide some encouragement for their offensive group out there after a five-yard delay of game penalty will back us up to the 18. And another learning moment there for <laughs> Justin Fields. And, and, but you got to get in and you got it. Playing in the game is a whole lot different than, than practice. Just a aware, game awareness. Taking a look at the, the game called the play clock, etc. Hand off to Harrion. And Brian running between the tackles, dodging left and right, gets the ball inside the 10 down to the 9.5. Sherwood and Atkinson on the stop for the Tiger defense. And the gain was 9 by Brian Harrion. Had some good between the tackles running on that series in the red zone for Harrion. But it's fourth down and goal from the 9, and we'll try a field goal to go up by 20 with Rodrigo Blankenship. Setting up on the 16 and a half 
26 and a half, 27 yard try between the hash marks right in front of the goal post, kicking it into the west end zone. More the snap. Kamar to the hold. And now the play clock again. Down to zero. Time has expired again. Another delay penalty. My goodness. And that one you might be okay with. Just letting a bunch of clock tick <laughs> uh, uh, run down there. But a little sloppy for sure. Well, those flags keep stopping the clock. Offense, five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Back up uh, Rodrigo in the field goal unit, five yards. Line of scrimmage now the 14-yard line, so this will be about a 31-yard try. Again, not much of an angle right in front of the goal post for Rodrigo Blankenship. 325 remaining in the quarter. There's the snap. No, they throw it right to Rodrigo. He's going to throw a pass to Nauta. Oh, he overthrew him by a couple of inches. Nauta had his man beat. We ran another fake. Hot Rod took the snap, a direct snap to him. <laughs> now you know why they took the five-yard penalty. Oh, my goodness. He just overthrew Nauta. Would have been a touchdown on a beautifully designed trick play. It was right on target, but he didn't hit it. Oh, we're going to a timeout. Final one of the... Auburn takes over on downs after the failed fake field goal by Georgia. Stidham wants to throw from the 14-yard line. Crossing route caught around the 15 by Ryan Davis and covered up immediately by Mark Webb. Uh, the tackle made it to 15. It was a one-yard gain. And it'll be second down, Auburn, and nine to go from their own 15. Just three minutes remain in the contest. Georgia 27, Auburn 10. Dogs in two. It's a real soft two as well. Safety's back about five yards more than normal. Stidham throws over the middle. Slayton the target. Incomplete. Here comes a deep flag from the way of the back judge from at the 50. Threw that flag about 25 yards in the air. Going to be a hold or pass interference on DeAndre Baker. And that'll be another penalty on Georgia. That'll be our 12th of the Pass night. interference, number 18, defense. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. The automatic first down. Ball to the 25 for Auburn. First and 10 there. Our fourth quarter recap presented by Ag South and Ag Georgia Farm Credit. Loans for land and farm. Only one score in the fourth quarter is that 77-yard sprint by DeAndre Swift who has a career-high 186 yards rushing tonight as Auburn works through the air again to Davis. Out of bounds on the Georgia sideline at the 31-yard line. The pass complete uh, for a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Baker with the shove into the sideline for the Georgia defense. They give credit to the down four for Georgia today. They've done a great job getting into the backfield of Auburn pretty consistently. And throw it left this time. Run away from a blitzing linebacker. Jawan Taylor going to make the stop on Davis. At the 32, the gain is only one. It'll be third and three for the Tigers. The ball's on their 32-yard line. They go quickly. No huddle. 2-11, 2-10, 2-9 left in the ball game. Stidham looks to the right, now looks to the left, now pulls it down and runs it straight up the middle. 35, 40, 45, slides near midfield. Probably, if he didn't mind the contact, could have kept running, got a lot more yards, but he protected himself and slid feet first at the 47-yard line, a 15-yard gain, and a first down for the Tigers. Two receivers right and left for Auburn. Stidham back to pass, looks up on his toes, throws it across the 50 to Malik Miller. A back catches it at the 48 and angles left to the 41. Walter Grant with a tackle for the Georgia defense. Auburn moving quickly. Ball's at the 41-yard line now. And that gain was 12 yards and a first down. Minute 38 to go. Clock stopped. Now it begins. Stidham throws it. On a line to Davis, angling out of bounds to the left side at the 38-yard line, a minimal gain of three. And the clock didn't move at all on that play. And now I think that's why the referee, John McDade, is blowing the whistle. They're going to have a, a clock correction, I believe, because it didn't move at all before the snap is at 138, and nothing ran off the clock during that play. Yeah, dogs, while they're figuring out where the clock should be, dogs in a pure prevent defense right now. Rushing three, drop The clock eight. never started on the first down play. The game clock operator, please put 142. 142 on the game clock. 
So you add more time to it? <laughs> it should be the other way around, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that play that was an untimed time play. Time started. So we're gonna go down for it. <laughs> Correction. Yes. Never started. We're gonna take four seconds off the clock. There you Game go. clock operator, please put 134, 134 on the clock. <laughs> well, it's good to have uh, you know about 60 Thank or 70 thousand people helping you. That's right. Helping you do that math. 134, and yeah, nothing gets by the dog fans, does it? 27 to 10, Georgia leading Auburn with a minute 34. That would be 94 seconds left in the ball game. Stidham, shotgun snap, and he's flushed out of the pocket right, rolling with a ball in his right hand, going to just sling it into the hedge to the Georgia bench. We had uh, Adam Anderson chasing him in pursuit, flushing him to the near side. Malik Herring forced him out of the pocket, came around wide, and uh, Anderson was closest to him when Stidham let that ball go incomplete on purpose over the Georgia sideline. So it's third down now back on the dog's 38-yard line. Third down and seven. Really a nice afternoon for the 6'4", or 6'5", 225 freshman out of Rome, Adam Anderson. They run Miller out of the backfield to the right. Stidham's going to throw a screen to the left. Caught at the 38-yard line. It's Davis, no man's land. He has become Auburn's all-time leader in career receptions tonight, but not a lot to show for it. LeCount and Webb cover him up after he made the grab at the 35-yard line. Three-yard pickup, and it's fourth down and four for the Tigers. That clock just continues to tick as well. Minute to go in the ball game. Large portion of the fans sticking around to see the very end of this one as Georgia's going to defeat Auburn here in less than 60 seconds. Stidham on fourth and four from the Dogs 35. Drops back with time. Not a lot of pressure. Deep ball, far sideline towards the end zone. Incomplete. Here comes the flag. Boy, that looked like pretty good coverage there. DeAndre Baker, another pass interference on him. He was matched up with Slayton that time, Z. That's a pretty good matchup. Slayton's a good receiver. Baker's obviously a good corner, but two uh, interference penalties here in the last uh, couple of minutes on DeAndre, it looks like. There's no foul for defensive pass interference. (laughs) The pass is ruled uncatchable. Thank you. The ball's turned over on downs. First down. John McDade, the wisest man on the field. And so the ball goes over on downs to Georgia at the 35-yard line. And the Dogs can uh, take a knee and be done with the Auburn Tigers. 41 seconds to go. And let the celebration begin in the Deep South's oldest rivalry as the Dogs extend their lead in the series, or will when the clock ticks down to zero, to three full games over Auburn in what has been a a great rivalry over 120 years. They had a dominant performance today from the Dogs, really from the opening whistle. You know, when you're able to come out against that front seven of Auburn and roll out 305 rushing yards, you're doing something right. Dogs starting to get healthy and get that ground game rolling just at the right time. Justin Fields will take the final snap. He'll take the knee, and the benches will empty onto the field, and the final 30 seconds will tick off the clock, and Georgia will conclude its ninth victory of the season the dogs with a second consecutive year of seven and one in regular season play in the southeastern conference the dogs close out conference play with his 27 to 10 win over the auburn tigers